Okay, stream should be live. Sweet. Some new mail from Dande. Okay, let's see here. Really hope my stream's gonna be going well today. As Anybody? Um, well, today I'm going off of Wi-Fi, not Ethernet. Um, if anybody does watch over, that's here, uh, from YouTube as well, let me know if, uh, the stream is ever terrible, then I, I'll connect the Ethernet, but, uh, it should be good. Alright. The snow seems to make our internet worse. That's pathetic. To do that, unfortunately. Yeah, same with you. Well, not in our case, because here in Bulgaria, unlike the inferior American system, we put our internet cables under the ground rather than on pole. Right. Vietnam was one of those really wild, hazardous situations where you have tons of cables um, above the ground like you sometimes see in, on TV. Uh, it's the real deal there. Alright, let's move this chat up. How's the weather in Bulgaria, Chris? Uh, it snowed like a couple of days ago pretty heavily, and that was it. Since then, it hasn't snowed at all. Uh, it's just been melting. The sad thing, when I was little, it would, like, snow for half the winter, but for the last, like, five years, it's barely rained. It's just snow. It's barely snowed at all. Well, weirdly enough, snow is an appropriate thing to speak about, because today we've got... Come on. Don't leave me hanging. The bino Close monsters. Enough. Hell yeah. All right. Let's stop this music. Great segue. There we go. Beautiful. Thank you, Chris. You rock. Mm -hmm. I see C's here. That's wonderful. Uh, yeah, he will be back shortly. He went to do uh, to get grab snacks. Cool. Awesome. Perfect. He's getting ready. Uh, JMPF. Hola, amigo. Great to see you. All right. There's me. Good. We're here. Let's take the sign off. We have officially started. Let's show everybody. There we go. Say hello, everybody. Yellow. There you go. Yellow's work. Hello. Blue's work and red's work. Hello. Hey. Hello. All right. There he is. Sweet. We are officially live and going. Greetings, Louie. Um, Ghost Findings TV. First time. I see live here, sweet, on YouTube. Hello there, new here, also hit the subscribe button. Sweet, how did you find us, Ghost? Please let me know so we can learn from that. Okay, <clears throat> let's see, looks like Jono's still being a crybaby about the topic and Pro manned up, he showed up. Thank you, Pro, you rock. Elithid, you're crazy. You are crazy. Did you even sleep, Elithid, Sid? Because I, I didn't sleep. I was up at 7 in the morning here, and I go to sleep around 5. I went to sleep at 5, couldn't sleep till maybe 9 o'clock in the morning, and I saw Elithid Sid here the whole time, too. <laughs> so I don't know what's up with this guy, because he's on a similar time zone as I am. This guy is wild. All right. I already vote. Okay. Is John even listening? I don't see Jono here, but maybe he heard me. I shall repeat, crybaby. Uh, well, John, John's actually at his vacation, so he can't join. Uh, pathetic. Yes, I am pro. That's right. You guys been doing that all week. Cool. Uh, C, thank you for watching over on YouTube as well. Let me know how the stream goes. Uh, Louis, you guys over watching on uh, YouTube, do let me know. Um... How the uh, stream goes if it's if it's weak, uh, internet wise. Hopefully it's going to be all right. Hopefully it can handle everybody. Um, 
Let's see, Louis linked me. Thank you, Louis. You rock, Louis. That's the. Uh, you've brought over, uh, I think, a couple people. I want people by now. Okay, let's get started here. Um, first of all, let's do some announcements. Um, because there's a certain monster in this season. Can anybody mention what season of monster this is of real life monsters? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? I ain't mm -hmm. got a clue. Let's see. Let's see. I'm gonna turn on the light. There's Jono. Not really being on topic as usual. My goodness. How do I find these slayers? Well, this slayer. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. Okay. It's the season of tax monster. So I've been working on that. Uh, it's quite annoying. Especially if you make a little bit of your own money. Because in, in the U.S., if you make $500 a year of your own money, like self-employed or your own business, which isn't much, right? 500 bucks, But you already have to report that, and that already gets taxed. And self-employment oh, money bullshit. and businesses get taxed like hell here. So actually, if you're making like, let's say about $70,000, $100,000 here from your own business... It's one of the worst brackets for being taxed here. They take so much. Um, it's terrible. Um, yeah, a guy I follow uh, said that there's like a 40% income tax for self-employed people. And that's just awful. Uh, it's. I think it's, it goes from like about 15 to 25. The point is, in the U.S. now, if you're middle class and if you don't have kids like me, it sucks for you. Um, they suffer the worst. The middle class here really, really gets it. Um, you got to be either really, really rich or you're poor and you can take advantage of the system and have a bunch of babies. Um, see, we were thinking the opposite. We were thinking, let's, you know, plan, not have kids, be responsible. But finally, it kicks you in the ass if you do that. So anyway... <laughs> Real Life's Monster, the Tax Monster, is here. Uh, I've been working on that. Hopefully, uh, I got my info right. I'm using these online tax stuff. If you guys ever get to... Well, let me see. Not many of you in the U.S. here, so... For those of you that are in the U.S., if you get to taxes, I do recommend those online forms. Um, they're free at least the first time you use them. Like, last year it was free. This year I paid, but I owed, so... I got to... You know what? Why am I revealing this? But I'm just going to say, try out those forms. Because uh, I used to use uh, paper, regular paper form, and fill that out. Anyway, on to the next topic. Um, I mentioned mobile games last week. And I was saying how they suck. And I asked anybody here if they play, and it was just silence. Um, again. <laughs> I downloaded a couple more, and they are shite. Um, what happened? It's like every mobile game is the same. I find mobile games from Instagram. I search for eye candy and then I find something that looks like, you know, like it could be addictive. Like uh, defense games where, you know, the things walk up in the line and then you have to shoot them off. But everything that they advertise that looks cool like that, it's the same shit after you download it. After you download it, there's a whole like... Thing. You have to build stuff, structures, and build your army. And then sometimes you get to do that fun mini game, which is totally ridiculous because we used to get old mobile games for crappier phones that just had that mini game, but it was the whole game and it was free. Now everything is pushed for mini transactions, and you just get to play that little thing every once in a while it's so ridiculous and every game is the same no matter what they call it and no matter what they show it's always like building all this crap like your capital building and this and that and and of course you can't do it quickly unless you pay so then you have to get back on your phone has anybody can anybody relate to this yep i am N not familiar with this from an outsider's perspective. Okay. As the, the, those precise practices are why, oh shit, that's a boss running towards me, are precisely why I don't play phone games anymore. Yeah, they've all become the same crap. I mean, that's cool. It's a cool kind of game style. It's not for me at this part of my life, I'd say. 
but it's cool. But for every game and company, it's it's like one company runs all these and creates all these games. They look great. They're complete. A lot of effort goes in, but it's finally it comes down to them trying to get your money in just the, the sleaziest ways. It's pathetic. May I recommend uh, the good old Angry Birds? Please do reason, recommend. You know what you get. Yes. Yeah, see, like Plants vs. Zombies, Angry Birds. Um, there was uh, another, like, crappy, like, t- they're all kind of 2D, really. But um, on my older phone, I had a, one of those games where it's a defense game where you got the zombies walking up in a line and you have to put down your towers. And that's all you do. And the next one, and, and it looked like a comic book style. It was really cool until you got your whole thing full of guns shooting at them. You don't get to that point in these games. Um, I, I know I haven't downloaded enough. I only downloaded a, f- uh, downloaded a few, but I downloaded the big ones, the ones that are advertised, and they're crap. Okay. With that, it looks like I'm looking a little bright here because today my camera's overexposed and we're talking about albino monsters. That's why. I've been excited about this topic because hopefully we can uh, delve a little deeper. We can test just how creative our discussions can get. And, and yeah, so let, let me see what you guys said over on YouTube here. Uh, oh, I'm not ghost. Uh, Z, going. did you send in a link to the stream? Yes. Okay. Hey, old Mark Peters. Glad to see you. I'm from the UK. Awesome, ghost. I wonder how uh, the weather is there. We finally got snow. We haven't had snow here since around Christmas. So I wonder if you guys did. Hey, I said ice cream wasn't that bad. I'm sorry. Okay. Survival. Uh, ice cream. Okay. Thank you, Louis. Um, survival seems to be a topic I've been getting into with TV shows lately. But anyway, uh, let me introduce this topic. So albino monsters. Again, um, I've I delved a little bit into albinoism uh, last week, but let me do a more concrete introduction on that. And uh, let me introduce everybody in the chat. Cool, Jono did show up, that's wonderful. Um, so we have Adrian, or as we call him, Gian. Giano. Uh, he's gonna be in the text, maybe in voice, we'll see. As long as he sticks around, that's cool. We got Dark th- Darth Phoenix, Guten Tag. Dio Guten Tag. We have Elithid Sid. Hey man. Then we got JMPF. <laughs> we got JMPF. Hola, amigo. Then we got Chris. I'm just going to say it in Polish. Dzień dobry, Chris. Dobry wieczór. It's evening. Merci, zdrasti na tebe. Awesome. Then we got Pro. Oh. Uh, Procrastatron. Or Creative Equinox. It's better known. <laughs> and then we got C. Greetings, C. Hello. Did you get any snow out there, last C? Last time, I had a little case of... Case well, of what? I don't quite remember now. I wasn't <laughs> on vacation, which was what I thought it was, but... He got lumbago. Tired. Crap, guys. Oh, yeah, I've been in the cinema with my with my parents and my oh. sister and my, uh, her boyfriend and... Oh. oh god, I hate that, my family. Yeah, that <laughs> sounds terrible. I was gonna say your family actually sounds Yeah. I, I was gonna say your family actually sounds better than sometimes you make them seem, but then yeah, I could see that. That's that's a cringy situation. Ugh. I, I feel don't free. get me wrong, I like my family, but sometimes they're just a little bit too much. Sure. What movie did you guys see? The new Jumanji. Rather interesting movie. Not okay. really that creative, but it is. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's not revolutionary in any way, shape, or form. It doesn't sure. reinvent the deep anything. I mean, but it's it's a nice movie. It, it does some of the things it needs to do for being, you know, what it is. Right. It's a fun action movie that combines The Rock and Jack Black. It's no Robin Williams, but it does the trick to at least be entertaining. Yeah, I think that nicely summarizes it. Um, I haven't seen yeah. it. I've seen the first one, but uh, I was going to mention the Robin Williams ones. Was one. Um, okay, let's get the party going. So albinoism is a genetic morph 
mutation, slight mutation, uh, when you are born with less melanin or complete lack of melanin. I don't know if it's ever complete lack of melanin. I, I think it is, actually. I'm not sure, though. But it's a it's very low amount of melanin in your skin, which melanin is what makes your skin darker. So we have human albino, sure. We have black people that are albino. You can search that up. Um, it's, uh, it's interesting. It's rare. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, in the pet market, albinoism is liked for certain things. Uh, it's liked for sometimes the rarities in the hobbies, but also such as mice. They... Why do we see all these white mice and rabbits in pet stores where they and then we never see white mice in the wild because they've bred albino to albino to make these cute, clean looking white, as we call lab mice. Um, but that's definitely wouldn't be naturally so. There wouldn't be that many white ones. Um, as in nature it goes, when something turns out albino, it makes it too obvious. It makes it go against camouflage, so usually they don't survive for long. So it's very rare to find an alligator or something. That's albino. We, you can still find pictures. It's very rare, again. Um, it happens in captivity, uh, for reasons I mentioned before. Um, there's a... And it's just awesome to see certain creatures. Like, there, you know... One of the great American animals that we have here are American buffalo, bison. Um, as in other countries, you have the water buffalo look, but here we have... Oh, in, in Europe, where they have uh, uh, the bison look of buffalo as well. Um, I forgot what they're called in Polish. Uh, Chris does know what I'm talking bison. about, though. Yeah, bison. Bison, yep. Uh, oh, I bison. Think, I thought it's żubr. No, I forgot. Yeah, no. we call it bison. And uh, on the topic of words, I'm pretty sure that the condition that you were referring to is pronounced albinism, not albinoism. Oh, albinism. I, I wouldn't be able to tell them apart. Did I say albinoism? <laughs> but yeah, yes. al albinism as far as uh, the noun of that. So, um, okay, so yeah, so that's interesting. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention as well is... I'm in to the topic, to the hobby of exotic animals. Um, that's also why I started the World of Monsters channel. I do mention that in our intro page uh, video, an old intro video, but it's a second edition one at least, um, about my love for animals and interest. And I have uh, interest in the hobby of reptiles and amphibians. I have uh, for a long time. And within that hobby, that's a, this is a very common thing um, Especially, I'm going to name one animal, and that is the ball python. The ball python is one of the more affordable, good, easy-to-take-care-of pet snakes. Um, they are beautiful. They come from Africa, I believe, yeah. I uh, forgot which area specifically. But uh, they're more affordable, and they're easy to take care of, just like corn snakes. But they're also easy to breed. Beautiful shark there, Jono. Um, now, that's a great, great white shark, as we agreed. <laughs> the albino great white shark. Damn, that's rare. How did it survive that long? I don't know, by eating things. So, <laughs> yes, and not being eaten. So, oh, as an, and exactly. as I was saying, so once something turns out white, it's easy to see, and it can be easily hunted down by predators. That's why it's so rare in nature. So anyway, with ball pythons, they took it a step further, as they have with many animals in the past, particularly fish, some with birds, um, where you just start breeding, um, breeding certain morphs in. And now we have so many different morphs of ball pythons. And retic python, uh, reticulated pythons, and a few other reptiles, but particularly, the prize goes to the ball pythons for being so easy to breed and mess with the morphs. So you take a uh, a female albino, you take a male albino, you're gonna get albino kids. But then it gets different. It, it, you get into different morphs. They're called spider morphs, striped and orange and ghost morphs, and all oh, these wild morphs, uh, trying to keep the uh, it out of the family lineage as much as possible because inbreeding even in the in reptiles is not great although it's not as 
bad as uh, as uh, with other animals. But after so much inbreeding, yes, you will get negatives. Um, hey, so anyway, um, what was I saying? So that, that's interesting. So we can cover that as well today. Other morphs of monsters as well. Uh, I think other morphs and um, mutations, natural kind of mutations of, of breeding, we can cover in here as well, since albinoism is uh, so uh, direct. Um, I do want to cover some a little bit more, but I don't want to step on anybody's share. I don't know how to do that without doing that. So we'll see. Maybe it'll come up as we talk. Um, I took a long time looking for an unknown. Good, Louis. Good. That was the point. It wasn't supposed to be easy to find an albino monster, but I found a doozy. <laughs> Hopefully the guys don't mention it. Yeah, I do want to talk about one because I want to talk about something a, a bit deeper and more interesting other than there just being an albino monster, but more of what that means. And my example, I don't want to go deep into a mine. I just wanted to throw it out there. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't want to spoil anyone. So let's get started with this chat. Um, Louie, uh, how are you going to share? Are you going to post it over in chat and I can uh, get the image here? Or did you send me anything? Probably be easier if you just uh, type it up in chat. I can copy it over here. Well, I have three. So. <laughs> I technically have two. Sweet. Look at these guys. That's right. Never underestimate the monsterites. Underestimate my ready-to-go knowledge about monsters. Does it need to be albino or just be the only one who appears to be white? Um, we're just gonna... Well... Yeah, if it's unclear, but we see that there's only one really white one. Remember, albinoism, the thing with it is, is it's gonna be white and usually have, like, reddish hues to certain anatomy like eyes that's why mice have the white hair fur and then reddish eyes then you know it's albino because there's other morphs such as uh, i forgot the one it's not ghost but there's another awesome morph where the animal is white totally white but the eyes remain black it's pretty awesome and that's not albino in that case one one um by the way i forgot to mention if i can get an image real quick uh, one morph is called piebald. Let me tell you real quick about piebald, and then I'll call somebody out, or you guys can. Has anybody heard of piebald here? Let me see here. Mm, can't say I have. Okay. Great. Don't think I have. Inform me, then. All right. For you guys that are on YouTube, you can see the images I'm looking up. I'm posting this one. So here's a ball python. And it's a piebald morph. This is very rare. This is more rare than albinoism than a lot of the other morphs, actually. You have what you see is the regular um, texture uh, patterns of the ball python. Like the head looks normal, up, down, the, the neck, and all that area. Hold on, Jono. Stay on topic here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but then you get patches of complete white. Just totally lacking, and it's all around. It doesn't matter what anatomy, anatomy it's hitting. It just turns it all white. It's crazy. More white than albinoism. Because if this ball python would be albino, uh, let me show you that real quick as well so you can compare the difference. Because albinoism doesn't make it completely white. It turns the darks into yellows. Okay, so let's see here. There we go. So here is a ball python. Again, people love breeding these guys, but it's gone into other snakes as well. Even common snakes like garter snakes here. We have garter snakes in the in the U.S. Um, they, you know, the, actually the picture above with of me holding a snake, that was a garter snake I found. But to find a, a white garter snake, the price goes up. It's very rare. I've seen them. I've seen breeders make them, but even... F that's what's exciting is you you can take a common animal and make a rare morph and it's completely different just to look some people don't care actually about that stuff so anyway you see the difference between what it may what it means to become albino and then 
Pybald, and Pybald used to be very expensive. So, for example, a BiPython in the U.S. would sell for about thirty to thirty-five dollars and up, depending who's selling it. Uh, yeah, back this in the has day. become the albino pet podcast right. now. <laughs> um, Fascinating. <laughs> that is our yes, the the intro. Just to just to make it clear what we're talking about and what other morphs we can cover here with our monsters, because monsters could look amazing under different morphs, I would imagine. <clears throat> so anyway, these guys used to sell for fifty. Albino would sell for maybe a hundred, and a, and the piebald above here would sell for about twelve hundred dollars. They would actually have security wherever they had piebalds. The price has gone down since because more breeders started breeding piebalds and such. But it's still a rare thing, and I, I'm pretty sure they still sell for at least eight hundred dollars for that. That's for a thirty dollar snake. Um, so that's what that means. Yeah, so I'm they're rare. Really they're priced. The whole fascination with albinos. I much more prefer the colored versions. They look more nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm I I I don't mind, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm with Chris, Chris on this one. Uh, yeah, and a lot of the animal channels you'll find on YouTube, they will uh, share their opinions, uh, how they don't care, they actually prefer the originals, because some breeders, they push it too hard, and the prices get crazy, but in the end, it's the same snake, it's the same genetics, it's still a ball python, it's nothing different, or whatever it is, a boa. Oh, what the hell It's just is... easier to find in the dark. <laughs> Yeah. Is, my reasoning for it is just all white seems too plain for my taste. It's more, it doesn't have as much flavor. Well, you see, Chris. Flavor. There are, mm -hmm. yeah, we don't want to eat them. Uh, there are, uh, there are dark morphs. There are where they become as black as possible. This one, I believe, is called a clown morph. See, it's the same type of snake again. But <laughs> albino beluga whales, nice. That'd be an interesting spot. Albino beluga whale. Again, it works. They'd only you could only probably see one because of their redder eyes. Okay, I'll share one more and then we'll move on to the topic uh, from monster to uh, from animal to monster, which is not that far away. Yeah, I think so too, Pro. I'm a fan of finding the really white morphs or really black morphs uh, for my black and white theme collection. So here's another one. This one's a younger one. But see how completely different their colors are. They look like a different species of snake, but it's the same. Uh, their patterns change. The clown ball python above, the orangey one, actually looks like a blood python uh, with that pattern style. If you look, at a, look up a blood python, which are totally awesome snakes. <clears throat> so anyway, with that topic of albinoism and what it means and what it symbolizes in our society and such, that's what we're going to be deep digging into in our chat today also. And how much more expensive they are compared to other ones. Oh, wait, no mind. <laughs> that's right. Or in the monster sense and its society, how much more superior or they looked upon as being superior or not superior. Let's talk about that. So the issues of yeah uh, of that okay of sticking out like a sore thumb in society is it a good thing is it a bad thing let's find out um let me oh leucistic is the lower pigment in the yep leucistic it's the opposite of melanism yeah so leucistic um, is the dark one that's where they start getting uh, more melanin and dark Thank you, Mark, for so, mentioning that. Uh, awesome. We should cut this part out with uh, an entire half-hour section about how albinism is uh, affected by people. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I, I wonder went on for quite a while. <laughs> I wonder how... Um, I think Pro mentioned it, or no, somebody else mentioned it. No, Chris did, but it, it wasn't on the topic of albinism. But if we do have a... No, I think it was. Albino people in certain African countries now, how they were treated? Yeah. In uh, certain African countries that... Uh, villages that are not as technologically or civilizationally developed, they have, where superstition and you know, shamans and stuff are still prevalent, uh, it's considered that albino people uh, give good luck, so they are actively actually hunted, and by shamans who 
unfortunately amputate them and uh, use their bodies to make totems and fetishes. Fetishes. There we go. Yep. So there you have it. That's some, uh, we could say, more primitive uh, human approaches to this topic. So let's see how monsters would deal with them and so forth and so on. Hope you enjoyed this little introduction on it. I hand the discussion stick over to C. C, what do you have for us today? Ugh. No eyebrows. I so. have no words. I thought you had some, you C. You had three monsters. Yeah. So, my turn? Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, thank the shots. I never thought I would get to... Um, all right. There's one. <laughs> Jeez. We have a beautiful specimen Considering of... Considering moments uh, we see. Steve Alton's book called The Meg. Not the movie, but the book. The book um, has a giant albino megalodon rising from the deep of the Mariana Trench to... Um, feed upon the local whale population of the Pacific Ocean. Very nice, very nice. If you don't like, um, the book is superior to the movie, as always, but hey, if you don't, if this book cover doesn't catch your eye immediately, you really, really shouldn't uh, read it, because if if this isn't awesome to you, you, you probably, you probably have other needs. This is a megalodon that is white. In the book, it described as it is almost bioluminescent, but it is actually just white. Um, albinoism of some kind. Now, it has proven to be an albino due to the fact there are other megalodons later in the series that are not completely white. Yes, back to molding and all that. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> now, this creature is, of course, a megalodon. It's a giant prehistoric shark, and it has one of the most epic ways to escape from the hell it's stuck in and it has one of the most epic final fights in the entirety of uh, literature history i don't care what you say okay moby dick has nothing on this guy <laughs> well he has a dick i don't no chris no <laughs> Because uh, I do recall from the Meg that the Megalodon in question is female, so... Shut up, Chris. I know it, <laughs> that's true, but this... The, the, no. I'm just yeah. saying facts. Uh, okay. okay. Have I said a lizy? <laughs> Chris, go stick your tail into a blender, would you, you radish? Uh, no one. The other one... <laughs> Is the Graboid from the TV series of the Tremors? Um, it's it's a b- albino, and somehow it doesn't uh, evolve to the next life stages of other of these Graboids. <sighs> so, it, usually, if you don't know, the Graboids are giant worm-like creatures that can dig through ground as about as fast as as a projectile flies through water. Well, mm. faster, so I think it's a torpedo, man. These things are impressive, and those jaws are terrifying. Uh, it's a work of art with the original special effects that was in the first movie. This is the third movie that was the introduction to the TV series. Oh. Sorry about that, Darth. That's why, guys, uh, Sorry, we, let's try to... Uh, I mean, for future monster cast, let's try to keep it to one monster so we don't step on the other people's uh, topics. And then if they don't get mentioned in the end, we can mention those second ones. Uh, No problem. Just because there's, you know, quite a few of us. Go on, Z. Well, yeah, okay, that's fair. And there was a last one. This one is, uh, you know, it doesn't go into becoming... uh, the next state, the Graboid state life stage is a big mess in all due technicality and in all due honesty. It's a... No, I don't know what to say to this. It's 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 just horrifying. So in the movie, is it? Do they ever regard it as an albino graboid, or yes. they do? Okay, it is I considered an albino graboid. 
I just know that those movies go downhill like many others after part I one. Mean, it's well. It's, well Has anyone seen the, the new second Graboids? movie? Was decent. Okay. How, how was the latest one? The latest Tremors. I, I believe some actors were back in it. Some of the original cast. Uh, I haven't seen that one. I don't think that. Uh... I, I wanted to, but I mm -hmm. didn't have the time or the expectations to do so. Okay. I think I'll be skipping the last one due to that being a Warhammer one, and I might <coughs> step over Chris's toes this right. time. So <laughs> I'll just skip that one. Cool. Right on. Um, if you guys noticed, watching us over on YouTube, I did widen the and lower the screen for um, our internet visual for you guys. I hope that helps a little bit. Hello, I guys. Overlapped it. Hey, Gargamel did show up. Yeah, I'm sorry I wasn't going to get here early. No worries, Gargamel. Um, I, was thinking I, I was thinking I would not um, be able to participate in today's MonsterCast, in part because um, my brother was working on um, uh, my window, and we had one of the fixes in his box was making a lot of noise, so I was just oh, okay. something that well, thank you made for... it difficult for me to... Yeah, thanks for considering that. Um Louis says uh, Tremors is actually a good movie series. I'll have to check out the whole series if they do connect and of course some aren't going to be as good as the other but as long as you know the story goes on and it's not too ridiculous uh um, I'd like to see it. Hellraiser is rather is ridiculous crazy. but when you get used to the explosions and treat it like any other Michael like a Michael Bay movie you'll probably be fine. Yeah. So so far we have two big monsters that all albino. So to get that that point again, they probably put up with a lot of rivalry and uh, stuff or like that to get to that point uh, to become that big. And so, churchers, and then just an obvious giant threat. Um, there's the bobbit worm. Thank you, uh, Jono, for sharing that. It's certainly relevant. Um, so, but those are more Probably animalistic uh, type monsters. They're just big, uh, beastly, and so on and so forth. So let's continue with the the next person. Uh, Gargamel, did you have any uh, albino monster you'd like to talk about today or share? Uh, the problem is I don't really know of any in particular. I, I probably have seen at least some information on one or two of them, but I don't remember if I do. Okay, no I problem. Do. So I wasn't really that interested in this. I just thought I'd, you know, stop by and chat a little bit with you guys. And sure, no problem. Maybe talk mm -hmm. about it. I'm sorry I don't know of any in particular that I can think no of. Worries. I the found the last three ones during the last ten minutes before we started. Yeah. Uh, the, about the first 20 minutes of the monster cast, I was actually just talking about albinoism as a morph mutation and uh, uh, more real life uh Relevance of it. Well, actually, to see um, how we Chris, can connect with Chris Chew's, um, Chris Chew's rat character looks like it could be albino. Uh, partially, he's got uh, black coat for just half his face. Oh, yeah, I white remember that now. Sorry. Well, speaking of which, good point, Gargamel. Because we do have an albino, not among us today, but that's Donde. Donde is certainly an albino rabbit with chainsaws. There we go. Oh. Mm. So. Oh. Get your teeth sharpened, yes. as he's an easy target. All right. <laughs> Did I miss this? Ah, uh -huh. let's. Are there albino robots? Hmm. Uh, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no. Well, you can paint a robot to look like an albino. Just right, know, right. It wouldn't be that. That's how it works. <laughs> no, no. I, it wouldn't be technically albino, but you could sort of paint it to sort of look like an albino. Like you sure. paint it completely white and like give it um red, you know. Glowing See, eyes. There you go, Gargamel. But it wouldn't it. technically be an albino in the sense because it wouldn't be because it's not a thing of nature. It'd be something See, built. See, that's an interesting question though because Necrons are not First of all, are Necrons somehow naturally made? I'm not sure how Necrons are made. I'm sure, we've discussed it here, but the Z, no, you probably know more about this than I do. You want to talk about it, Z? Chris, that's what did not you say? How Necrons work. They don't turn albino just because you paint them white. Right, how are Necrons made, see? If you take a cow that is made out of flesh and just take paint 
and galvanize it into the white, white material, it doesn't turn into an albino cow, does it now? Yes, yes, see. So how are Necrons made? You throw, I, I don't, we don't know. Oh, we don't know. Okay. I thought you knew, see. I thought you knew. I had my trust All in you. Right, if- I mean, I could explain the fact that they walked into something called a Bioforge and became... Listen, this is not a Warhammer Law podcast anymore. Okay. Uh, just biotransference. Big forges called Bioforges that convert Necrons here in, into Necrons. They became robots. They became living metal. The cosmetics behind mm. the living metal are completely different from the dynasty to the kind of the materials you. Yeah. But you can't just make an albino. Well, so by if painting something white. Necrons have living metal, and it goes through this certain forging process. Is there a chance that they're? You get mutations wouldn't maybe be the best word for it, but th- some rare occasions where you get this different necron with some different things to its appearance. Um, would that I make would sense? I'd like to say that I don't know, but okay, I would like to say no for the simple fact that necrodermis is in most cases depicted as a uniform, uh, what's it called, metal, but it is metallic in nature. And I believe albinoism, as you spent half an hour talking about, is a naturally occurring thing. Okay. Well, what if, like, some... In some of the forging process, or whatever word we would use, they would be a little bit inferior. Like, they're, the metal they would get, the living metal, would be more rusted and a little bit lacking in something. Or more in something i mean there's a possibility of that and i'm sure there are some necrons maybe they come out and they're not superb like the rest and they just get destroyed or tossed aside i have the theory that not all the necrons are made through the biotransference and became molten wrecks of metal and half sentience okay but that is not confirmed we don't know and i don't have any evidence to support or disprove it so we're in the case of god with the believers can prove it and the disbelievers can disprove it okay it's very simple it's just not how it works we don't know if it how it works Ooh, inca if we don't know how it works, I can't tell you if it would work. We got a new person watching us, Inca. Uh, seems new. That's my friend. Oh, that is your Our friend. Our friend. That's what I thought, because it looked like uh, she or he knew both of you. So, uh, good. And she, I think she, said, see knows he just doesn't want to share. I think you're right, Inca. I think I agree. <laughs> All righty. All right. Cease playing every. Nice. Um, let's move since we started from the bottom. Maybe we'll just move our way upward. Um, yeah. Let's. I know works. Looks like pros ready. <laughs> <laughs> Aluminum necron is albino. Chrome. <laughs> yeah, be chrome. I'm, I'm getting my bats. <laughs> oh shit! The power went out. An albino bat. Awesome. We need it. We need that posted here somewhere. So, Pro, do you have anything for us today? Don't abandon us, Pro. I need your vote. These two have been whining all week about this topic. What are we voting so, on? They're, we're not voting on anything yet. Jono's just in his own uh, Slayer world. That's an awesome image. Thank you, C. Necron's playing baseball. Apparently they don't know how yeah, to swing the bat to too well. <laughs> the power came back. With a bat. <laughs> okay, if you don't have anything uh, pro, that's fine. Just let me know. Louis sharing uh, off to the side. So let me grab Louis info. How many people do we have watching us? I feel like, like a nice amount of people. Uh, what am I doing here? Okay. Uh, Five people. Sweet. Okay. Wonderful. Welcome, welcome, everybody. 
Maybe true. Aluminum Necron is a lineup. Okay, so what did the pros say? Oh, well, time to use data. Looks like pro doesn't have anything. Right, pro? You didn't say yes or no. So I'll just take that as a no. Oh, he, well, he's talking I'll about da data. Yes, albino. Mm. I thought he's talking about data from Star Trek. <laughs> albino robot topic. <laughs> Ew. Okay, he's looking. All right. We'll get back to you or let me know, Pro, if you have something. Let's go to Chris. I didn't say Ludacris. Alrighty. I said go to Chris. <clears throat> oh, no, it's not Ludacris. Don't you worry. <laughs> uh, I have two quote, quote, things that I would like to share. And for the first time, I'll actually be starting with the Warhammer one. All right. Where among the ever so lovely Skaven race, oh, uh, oh. there are... There are a number uh, that are born with white fur, e.g. albinos. However, there is one particular subset of them that I find the most adorable, you could say. Uh, within the Skaven race, Thank the you. black furred rat kin are the biggest and strongest and are trained to be the elite troops called storm vermin. However, the... Uh, Council of Thirteen, the leading body of all Skavendom, employs a specific unit of Storm Vermin that are the biggest, baddest, and most loyal Skaven, which is amazing. Being a double-crossing backstabber is literally bred into Skaven, you could say, but these particular Storm Vermin would never betray their masters, and they are known as the Storm Vermin. Which, uh, oh. I'm pretty sure, and this is another look of them. Oh. Armor of the best armor and weapons that Skavendom can provide. Uh, and they have, you know, the t s uh, English. English is a difficult language. <laughs> they, uh, you can see them in uh, this image from the game uh, Total War Warhammer. Uh, they're on the top image bright red armor and pale white fur well chris um don't worry too much about your problem with english i have trouble with english and english is my first and pretty much only language uh, well thank you for the words of encouragement i'm mean, see the reason i want to specifically bring up these storm vermin out of the sea of all the other uh, white fur skaven is because the albino storm vermin aren't born as albinos. They're all born as natural bl black furred skaven. Yes. However, when they are indoctrinated, whenever they are inducted into the albino storm vermin's ranks, the Lords of Decay, the Council of Thirteen, the people they will be serving, uh, they show them things so absolutely fucking horrific and that the hairs turn white. I'm getting to that, Z. Like, things so vicious, vile, and awful that these storm women would never want to Im uh, even imagine considering betraying the councilman. Like, okay, this warlord wants us to betray the council and is threatening to strangle us with their guts. That is still not as bad as what the council would do to us if we do that. And considering how horrible that stuff is, uh, their fur turns pale white. Hmm. Yes. Suddenly silence. What do you want it's me to scary. say to this? It, it's literally scaring the shit out of them. Yep. Yeah, well, um, I guess it must be something really terrifying. Maybe there could be like a meme where you like show, um... Fortnite uh, dancing, of course. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, so Fortnite dancing and show like the uh, storm woman becoming... Completely wide, like, ah! Mm. Hello, Joe. Welcome, welcome. I think it's your first time here as well. Or at least that I've seen. And. They're about. I know there's one around here. Uh, Go on, Chris. So that is all I had to say on them, unless uh, people have questions. I have one thing I want to say because you may suffer now, too. <laughs> so, again, how are they treated by the other Skaven, Chris? Uh, how are they want by the other Skaven? How are they treated? 
They are literally the highest branch of the military, so they can bully whoever they want, so long as they have permission from the council. There you go. I don't think the council is going to stop them. Which is interesting, because... Uh, there are a few things the council would like them to stop. The topic I wanted to cover is somewhat similar. Um, I think uh, they inspire... Maybe Warhammer was inspired by it, but we'll see. Um, although, in, in your case, they weren't as naturally created, but there was a process, and they have a certain position, too. Um, all right, Chris. Well, it is technically a natural reaction by the body, because when you are terrified, you suddenly There's develop There's nothing white natural hairs. about mm. turning white. Out it of happens to fright. humans. It is a thing that occurs naturally in the body, so it is a natural. Well, there's that case with uh, gorillas, silverback gorillas, where they gain the white hairs with a raise in testosterone, right? Not because the Gracia shows you that it's porn fold or something. <laughs> so, and to, in this in case, I shall be do... moving on to my second okay. monster of the day, uh, which is quite obscure considering how ingrained it is into Arthurian legend as it is uh, qu uh, it still technically has black hair but the rest of its body is pale white so I suppose it counts as an albino monster it is uh, one of the integral parts of the legends of Arthur uh, where it would it's kind of like a nemesis but also a friend of his uh, or it was at one point inducted into the highest echelons of the order, but its continuous greed for fame and recognition would drive it to want to seek higher titles and positions of power within it, uh, which would often put it at odds with Arthur, and he would even banish it at uh, one point from the order, but it still made its return as the two did indeed technically have a uh, friendly relationship, so it's a bit of a plant a lot. Uh, no, this monster has actually been shared a couple of times uh, on stream today, in fact, uh, mm. as it is uh, this. <laughs> oh. That's awesome. Thank you. Since Chris. we couldn't get the uh, John Dunham's uh, monster today, uh, I at least wanted to share this one for this particular stream since it kind of fit. There you oh. go. Jono can wipe his back? tears away. <laughs> uh, that was awesome. I wasn't expecting that since you covered the legendary Arthur. I mean, I know, I know, I'm a legend, but uh, there's also another legend, <laughs> an older, oh. an older one. I Thank you, Chris. Said Arthur, not King Arthur, to make it a <laughs> key <laughs> distinction. <laughs> uh, somebody needs to give C some oil. Uh, if somebody uh, pro usually carries an extra can of oil. Uh, let's see. All right. Thank you, Chris. Um, yes, my nemesis. He looks like a Mordred, too. <laughs> if you were to look at images uh, or like the the Merlin movie I always talk of, and you look at the appearance of Mordred and Arthur, John the Ham has a very Mordred appearance, <laughs> actually. Uh, as ever since I was introduced to a franchise by the name of Fate, I am not exactly comfortable discussing the King Arthur and Mordred relationship. Oh, God, that's weird. Interesting. I still need to learn, uh, hey, read. It's a trap. What's that book? Women of Avalon. Something of Avalon. I have that book. I still need to read it. Apparently, it's a good book. But it's about the women surrounding the whole Arthurian legend. Well, thank you, Chris. Um, it was my pleasure. And albino is he? Debatable. But he sure is a nemesis. Or my best friend. <laughs> I don't know yet. It's a love-hate relationship. Uh, apparently, Joe D over on YouTube said, heard there's a pretty brunette named John around these parts. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Jono, I think it's time for you to use the Spider-Man crying uh <laughs> gif that pro uses <laughs> all right that's true and creepy all right is that everything see uh chris sorry yeah that is all from me all righty let's move on ice cream after this to the <laughs> next one 
Uh, Pro, nothing yet. Let me know if you have something. There's no Bino Chihuahua. I have another one. By the way, um, Cliff, yes. you gotta play MMO RPG <laughs> Kaikun 2 and make Skaven World. There you go. Perhaps. I like that there's an opposite emoji of the crying uh, Spider Man one that Dio posted. <laughs> gonna cry um see if you have another one i can come back to you after everybody's shared if you're still around or do let me know if you do want to head off early then let me know and then you can share at that time all right all right see he's having a tough time today i can i can definitely see that i hope he's all right uh take care of him uh inca c needs c needs your guys support he has some serious rusting going on. It's probably the winter weather. Want John Ham Monster. It's time to choose as proper. Okay, going on. JMPF, my friend. What do you have for us today? Let's see if you got a cryptid. Wait a second. Uh, I have... Of okay. course. Sorry. What did he say? Anybody... Get proper reception? I do have a crypt. You don't? Okay. No monster today? Okay. No worries. Jump into whenever you want, JMPF. Uh, no, after I have... I have... I say I have a crypt. Okay. Wait a second. He's cutting off here a little bit. Did he say he does have a monster? I think so. Okay. Uh, share what you have then, please, JMPF. The internet monster is tackling us a little bit. We are from all parts of the world here. We don't discriminate. We rather enjoy that factor. Ooh, uh, let's see. Raincrawler, uh, Louis says, terrifying. Yo, ghost, are you still there? <laughs> JMPF just posted a picture of what looks like a, cool. a white big foot yeah. and on top of it is a creature that looks like a sort of kangaroo cat that's also white sweet so he did find the cryptid my man all right well I'm not sure if they're cryptids or if there's creatures that well it, you know it looks like based on this text it's not yeah cryptids. right and uh, hopefully thing is, I'm reading the text the white thing is a possible Cousin of Bigfoot standing at a similar reported height of five to nine feet, and most witnesses agree that it bears a strong physical resemblance to a large ape. Some accounts describe it as being kangaroo or wolf like, although they are outliers. Although physical descriptions can vary, the one feature that is the same in all accounts is the white fur covering the creature. Awesome. Thank you for reading that, Gargi. So, so you could technically be a what? Be a. I was going to say, are, are all ghosts albinos? Talk amongst yourselves. Oh. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I mean, no. <laughs> I love just weird. I love the title of this cryptid. Thank you again for living up to the cryptids, JMPF. I hope uh, Darth Phoenix gets some SCP for us. But um, I just love how it's called the White Thang. <laughs> you can imagine <laughs> where from the States this, uh, this <laughs> cryptid might stem from. I'm assuming some the southern deep states. South. Really deep south. <laughs> right. The white thing. I, I just saw a white thing yesterday. <laughs> it was it was full of snow, so I, I wasn't sure what I was looking at, but I saw red eyes. All right, so we got this kangaroo with a cat head and this Sasquatch-looking thing. Although not, oh, five to nine feet tall, so it is still tall. Um, let's see, so wolf like interesting. I wonder where did you even find this, JMPF? Good job. I'm gonna give you a, a watermelon for that. That's uh That's interesting. The white thing. I need to <laughs> check my cryptid book. It's in there. That's great. <laughs> Doesn't get more American than this cryptid. This is this cryptid is a uh state animal for some state what, what what is that called like every state here has a flower and a state animal so this is like the american country cryptid that's what we put on our flag 
the white thing. Sounds like the ladies' man from Saturday Night Live. <laughs> if anybody remembers that. All right, so Arthur, I sent this cord my submission. Okay, thank you, Raincrawler. I'll check it out. Oh, so that was you. Okay, that is you. Cool. Um, I open your messages in public, Raincrawler, since uh, the Discord's open. So just remember, whatever you send me will appear uh, on YouTube. Uh, I'm going to DM C some Necrons right now. Well, C will like that. The, that will yes, get his engine Necrons. revived. Good, yes, we need to revive C. He seems to be struggling today a little bit. I think Ghost passed out. <laughs> All right, so in Social Empires, so JMPF also says... <clears throat> Um, in Social Empires, Albino Werewolf is a unit similar, so in Social Empires, I assume a game, um, all right, yeah, a similar unit to Common Werewolf. He is weaker than, okay, so in this case, the Albino Werewolf is weaker. Uh, he has scars and blood around the body, so <laughs> he seems to have been picked on by other werewolves, probably. The beasts from the High Mountains want a blood feast. Interesting. I I'd imagine in a society like that, they grow up being picked on. But if they survive, just like that Megalodon that C shared, or the Tremor, uh, the Graboid, I, I would assume that if they pass through that suffering and abuse, maybe they become against their own society, right? But for sure, they might even be weaker like the Albino is naturally. But because they survived all that, they survived the pressure, they have the experience, they suffer the pain, they become more powerful. Um, again, a fascinating idea, especially with monsters being, or those that are between the level of being animalistic and more sentient as we humans are. Because we have those bestials and ones we already talked about. And then we have full society ones, almost like C, uh, Chris talked about. Yeah, like Chris talked about. But then there's the middle ground, you know, between bestial and really kind of intelligent creatures or monsters and how that albinoism will hit them. And it will probably be like Chris talked about the African uh, cultures, the old African cultures. It will probably be a method of singling them out whether good or bad. It'll be picking on them or honoring them and saying, wow, this is some godly creature. This is the Jesus of our society. They look different. They must be different. They are mixed with gods. So that is certainly something to be considered when you're world building and creating monsters for whatever reason you are. Uh, put or maybe the monsters just don't really care about that minor physical difference. Right, or they just ignore it completely. Yeah. Um, Joe D said, put that... So who is this Joe guy? <laughs> I'm assuming it was Sid? I'm not sure. Put that sexy John guy on the mic. Ask him what products he uses for them locks. They die for stress. <laughs> or is that Pro's that other so. character? Who knows? I'm not sure now. But it's not worth me getting distracted over. Anybody else want to comment on that? Uh, the white thing or... Go ahead, Jim. I think it would make a very nice... The white thing, thing is so, that's so southern. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the southern werewolf. The white thing. Or it's southern Bigfoot. Mm. I, I was thinking on William Corvinus from Underworld Evolution. Mm. Also, uh, an albino werewolf. But he was stronger. He was. He was stronger. And he was white. I don't know if he was albino, but he was a rather white werewolf. Um, definitely. I'm a fan of white furred werewolf, at least. I like to see them in movies, etc. If you've seen... you Well, it's over an hour long video, but me covering different werewolves. But I like to see them in movies particularly because, of course, werewolf movies will always be dark. They're going to have a dark filter on them, usually that bluish underworld filter that can get annoying after a while. But they're dark, so it's nice. It's a nice contrast, I think, to have that white furred werewolf against that dark in the movie. Uh, they just look gorgeous. The one from 
I'm sorry. The one from Ginger Snaps turned out being white, but because she was blonde. Okay. So that impacted the genetics. I, I like that. I like how they related that, that he was blonde, so he went into white form. That's cool. Well, thank you, JMPF. Well done. And that is an, indeed called an albino werewolf. Cool. All right. We're continuing. Interesting. Um, William was albino. They died from stress then. Huh. William was albino. Huh. Well, I do like that werewolf a lot. Uh, I don't want to weave it too much, but that's certainly one of my favorite uh, werewolves. Okay, continuing. Thank you again, JMPF. Let's go to Elithid Sid. Elithid, you've already given away yours, but can you share it again? Because I wanted to chat, because actually the one that Elithid has is is good. Uh, it's an interesting one because of, uh, well, you'll, you'll soon see. They call the Butcher of Blaviken the White Wolf. Mine is a cheat. Is yours a cheat? I don't know. Put it up, Sid. And don't drink too much today. Mine is a cheat. What is this? Weasel albino death. Uh, what am I looking at here? Looking at here. Special traits. So it's a it's an actual cheat in the game. Armor class. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a D and D thing. Albino death, a type of weasel. Okay, so D and D has an albino. Sweet. I'd have to look at my D and D archives for more albinos. I'm I'm curious about that. <laughs> There's a thing that just earned its own listing just for being albino. Okay, so weasel albino death. From D and D. Let me see what else I can read about it here. Special traits: keen, keen hearing and smell. The weasel has advantage on wisdom perception checks and rely on hearing or smell. Pounce if the weasel moves at twenty feet straight toward a creature and then hits the claw. Okay, so some rules there: albino death weasels, albino death weasels. That's what they're calling. Okay, are ravenous hunters and spend a very waking hour in search of food. Okay, sounds like a general. Weasel, let's see how big are they? Armor class 13. I don't know enough about D D stats to know yet, and that sucks. I want to learn more at least about this. Uh to figure out it how powerful the these creatures just, are. Sorry. It looks the child just picked um just uh, posted an image of something you might be interested in, also. That's albino. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. So we'll move on to that one next. But let me yeah, see. The so, albino xenomorph. Yeah. Um, so the, the weasel has 45 hit points. Uh, I'm guessing that's uh, low. So oh, I'm it's guessing it's uh, of the weaker that's creatures. The equivalent of a level four player character. Level four. Okay, so it's not that weak. Cool. Uh, so I would assume this. Does it have the size of this weasel? I'm assuming it'd be bigger. Uh, to be level four, I'm assuming the f their bite reaches five feet. So yeah, I'd assume it's a three foot maybe weasel it's certainly bigger than the ones we have maybe as big as an otter along those lines since that's of the f uh, same uh, animal family okay moving onward uh Alithid also posted this one um and i love this one this one of my fa i think this is in my top uh, does anybody remember if i listed the albino xenomorph in my top 13 favorite xenomorphs I don't sure remember. It's been a long time since I saw that video. Okay. I believe you did, but I can actually remember. Okay. Yeah, I, I think so, because I, I love this one. Black xenomorphs are amazing looking, and what they did with this white one, it's perfect, because it's it's just albino. It's got the red tints to it, too. It's not just ghost white. Um, and they added the tongue and everything. It it just it looks good. It looks aesthetically ugly and in that sense great as a xenomorph um now this one's very relevant guys um because this one the albino xenomorph i believe if anybody can catch me on this uh please do so if i say something wrong but the big deal about the albino xenomorph is that it was supposed to be the i think the original xenomorph for the original movie this was the design and then they went with the black one so 
Well, Mario, you know the original it. design for the um, <clears throat> original movie, um, the Xenomorph wasn't necessarily different color, but it had like eyes. Like it, like mm. they, like that was the original thing with the Xenomorph that they changed. They got rid of the oh, eyes. Right, they got rid of the eyes. The eyes the or, or put them under the thing. Some people don't even like those skull eyes that are under the the head thing. So, yeah. But uh, that's one thing that uh, was I was surprised to read. Um, and if anybody can uh, confirm or find the details on that. Um, but that's why they made this figure as uh, to display that. What could have been in the movie. Uh, I think the original... Um, what do you guys think? What if you saw the original Alien movie and it was this instead of the black ones? Do you think I don't it think it would be as scary because you wouldn't, you'd be able to see it a lot easier. True. Again, we have that point. Mm -hmm. um, do, you th do you think the French... I think it would be more like disgusting rather than scary. I think so too. I think it's a little bit more body horror-ish because it has a little bit more of that, well, I'd say Caucasian skin appearance, right? It's it's a bit more white to us. We can relate with the pinks in the skin. Um, so maybe a little bit more human um, or at least more fleshy. It certainly looks more fleshy than mechanical with the black ones. Do you think it would ruin the franchise? <laughs> Very well, could I think have. it would look too artificial. Mm -hmm. The black kind of makes it feel. Uh, uh, well, there is a thing in the documentary about the making of the Mech movie. There is a term about how um, albino creatures are very, uh, what's it called, hard to make look realistic. Mm. Because the fact that when they're white, they will just be white. The texture on them will be different. The way it will be looking is different. But when you come to the point of making something look white and realistic, you will always encounter the point of it being what is too white and what is realistic because one does not exclude the other and vice versa. Mm -hmm. You would think they just didn't paint it. Well, see, that's why I personally gotta give a lot of praise to the uh, makers of How to Train Your Dragon 3. As that's when we had the Light Fury, which was basically uh, Night Fury, like the main dragon Toothless, but completely white. And even uh, and Toothless's scales had extremely good looking texture. But as you said, Arthur, from the white, or was it uh, Z who said, uh, the. Uh, when something is white, it's harder to make texture visible, but mm -hmm. they made the Light Fury uh, like scale texture look very good. Yeah, yeah. No, they, they still did an awesome job. Um, I think it can go either way. It depends because I know as in, in uh, priming miniatures, when you prime them, I used to prime them white. And it depends what the final color is going to be. You can prime white or black or gray. Um, but I know when I would prime white, you see the details easier. Um, when you prime black, it's actually harder to see the details. It's then it comes down to applying paint. This xenomorph, for example, being so light, I actually see the details better, right? So it, it depends. And I think black has the similar um, challenge, like Venom. If you guys ever painted or, or done something that's a black creature and tried to show you know, hey, here's its arm. Well, you can't see it because it's black too. You know, had that challenge in your artwork, you know what I'm talking about. And I think we could see that with both black and white. Um, but there's maybe another challenge that comes in with white and making it, like C said, make, making it look real because it will already look artificial because it's so weird. Maybe black's easier it's bright. It's, to blend I mean, in there. When it's something is white and glowing, it's very hard to make it look like it is actually white and glowing. Yeah. And you know, not. One thing that yeah. reminded me of, uh, see, speaking of that, I was trying to think of white people, um, albino or very white, you know, toned people. And yeah, that looks weird. That's why, you know, the men in black, you know, the cryptid, uh, they talk about them looking very white and being mechanical. See, it has this, this fake look to it. And there was this movie, I forgot the title of it, with this white, he was bor born a powder if anybody remembers the movie Powder, he was born very white, 
practically albino. Um, I forgot his eyes. I think he was albino. Yeah, he was born albino, but he had these powers. He had certain sensitivities to electricity and things like that. Um, good movie. Interesting movie. Um, I, I really like it. Yeah, I do recommend you guys check it out. And he was definitely singled out by society. But yes, he, he had certain um, sensitivities that uh, most people don't. Um, but he did look fake, you know, and uh, that's I just thought of that because C mentioned that. So we do have that challenge. And when there's a challenge, what do we do? We like to approach it. So, hmm, adding albinomism to the next art contest, that could be interesting. All righty. Um, but what did you say? Oh, that's interesting. Nothing real. Okay. Um, I want to thank you guys for watching. We have seven viewers. I'm sure there's some of us here on YouTube. That means we hit a record, guys. And for all of you guys, for you party poopers, particularly the two of you trying to bring Griffo into the boat, that's pretty awesome. Because we got, uh, what, we got seven there. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 with me. 17 people. I'm sure some are duplicates, but uh, that's pretty good. I, I think we can say we hit a record or we're on the line. So huzzah, everybody. Give yourself a whip on the back. Hell a bone yeah. whip, of course. A bone. Huzzah. If memory serves me... Go ahead. Go ahead. If memory serves me correctly, that was supposed to be the original Xenomorph design. Right, that's what Pro's saying. If you guys wonder why it looks like a Xenomorph warrior, it's because this design was the inspiration for said warrior design for Aliens, the second one. See, Pro gets it. So yeah, that was the original. Uh, pretty amazing that there's so many people, they never discuss the white one. That's why I really want this model, not only because it's a cool white Xenomorph, but because it has meaning, this was the original, and that I think is awesome. I gotta ask you I guys. Mean... <clears throat> yes. For by aesthetics, you guys know how I feel about this one already. I want to ask you guys though. It's repulsive. Do you like it? What do you think? Which one? The albino xenomorph. Yeah, I think it's repulsive, but then so is the black one. Right. Uh, so do you like really, it? It's not, really, it's not even just the color. That makes it's not the cold that makes you repulsive. The fact that it's a xenomorph. <laughs> true, true. So that's why it comes down to the simplest question: Do you like it? No. From a, you know, a, a horror standpoint, kind of, but it would be a little more difficult to make scary because it would be a lot easier to see, and yeah, it would be a lot more difficult to be yeah, able to take seriously the, 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 the eye. Mm -hmm. Mastered the fact of never showing too much of it until. True. You know, an appropriate amount of time has passed. And not only that, but it, like, you know, it has to be somewhat believable that this thing could be, like, hiding in such a way that they wouldn't notice it before it's stru striped. And if it's, like, really easy to see, that makes it a little more hard to believe. Yeah. How would you like, how would you guys like to see it in the movie? Maybe, maybe. Didn't maybe. we have an albino version at some point? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I, um, we had the protomorph, which is pretty much an albino. Yes, that was what I meant. Yes. The you mean Neo? And the newborn? Yeah. Oh, See, the neomorph, yeah. Yeah, I would have preferred, instead of the beluga morph and neomorph, I would have personally preferred if they made a good alien movie. Um, that people can agree on, you know, that makes the fans happy, but included the albino. I mean, it is part of the originals. Xenomorphs spawn a lot. Um, we don't know that much about their biology, but you could assume once in a while, maybe you'll get an albino. And it makes sense. And there are a lot of xenomorphs. Again, it's it's like Tyranids. You know, they, they breed quick. So there should be some. There could very well be some. And it would be relevant in the movie, and it would be nice Easter egg for people to see, hey, they included the original albino. I don't know. I think that'd be yeah, awesome. Yeah, maybe it would be... Maybe it'd be like some kind of mutation I mean, every once in a while that occurs. Exactly. Like we produce we have, a, we have a case in modern media which a lot of it has very deep background and we have to appeal to an uh, audience of people that might never, ever, ever have heard about it and 
Right. I know to, I mean, it would be a cool background thing, but to specifically have it highlighted or something, that would maybe just be weird. Right, maybe, maybe. not highlighted, but still part of the movie. I mean, the Neomorph was, and nobody knew about that because that's completely new and made up by the that director, right? Yeah. Or whatever. So, so I think that was would make more sense. At least it would have more backing, and it's. I think I don't see fans complaining as much about this one as maybe the others, you know, of the new ones. Anyway, let's uh, let's move along. Uh, enough time spent on this one. I can't be that biased. That was JMPF and Elithid Sid. Thank you, Sid, for sharing. Um, and you found one from D&D, so thank you for the D&D side. So we got Warhammer covered, D&D covered, Cryptid covered. We still need SCP covered, but that's why I love these monster casts. We got enough cover people to cover all these fields. Uh, let's go on to... Gargamel, didn't I? Oh, yeah, Gargamel didn't have. Uh, so let's go to Dio. Dio. Holy Dio. Holy moly. Are you there? Do you have anything? Is Dio... We'll see you guys later. See you, Gargamel. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Nice day. Bye. See ya. Have a good yeah. one. All right. Let's see what he's got. Is, Elbi is Dio an albino? That is a question, too. Sorry, Arthur. I can't talk about Monster because you didn't mention me when you welcomed everybody. Oh, I didn't. I forgot you. Jeez, people are so picky here. People can pick on me all they want. My 100,000 subscribers, but something I do. And Arthur, yeah, fucked up. But whatever. Um, <laughs> so don't count as participant as a watch. All right. Well, if you want to share something deal, go ahead. But if you want, you're going to be uh, that way, whatever. Um, I. Uh, okay. Kids are going to be kids, I guess. And we got monsterites. I thought us monsterites are better than that. Not cool, bro. Um, let's go on. Deal, you're welcome to share. If you have something, I'll read it for you. Darth Phoenix, it's your turn. I still got to share on behalf of Raincrawler. And... Oh, yeah, and catch up here. Louis said, yeah, man, the big chap was white. Isn't until they painted it. Nice. Big chap, yep. That was the name of the original... Xenomorph. What were the numbers of that Xenomorph? Uh, it was called a Xenomorph. Uh, forgot it had the no Roman numerals for that one. Did you know the albino Xenomorph actually made it into the final cut of Aliens? When Ripley threatens the eggs, the queen tells two of her guards to back off the second. The second one is the albino's. Really? Hey, guys. So, yeah, check that out. Next time you watch Ripley Aliens, West keep an eye out for the albino. When Ripley threatens the eggs. Oh, I think I remember when she threatens to burn the eggs, right? The queen tells two of her guards to back off, and the second one was albino. Oh, really? Is that, like, was that supposed to be an obvious albino, or does it just look whiter? Ooh, I think I probably... I can only it. remember the, the shadows. I remember them backing off, them showing them, but it was in the dark. Uh, cool. So watch out for that Easter egg, guys. I might have to make a video about that just because I haven't made a video in a while. And I'll say why in a moment. Yeah, man, the big chat. Okay. It's very detailed, but not nearly as scary. That's what Rita says. It's very detailed. Yep. It looks weaker. Okay. I could see that, too. I could see white looking weaker or, or stronger as you have demons and angels, right? The albino xenomorph's tongue was supposed to be used to make the hive its secreted resin from the tongue. What? Used to make the hive its secreted resin from? Harden and make the hive walls. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. I remember that fact, too. It was supposed to use the, the tongue to make the hive walls and help make the hive. That's why they had that long tongue. Hey, it's albino me. Thank you, Dio. Um... Albino Monster Master. Is he weaker or stronger? No eyebrows. Though. I don't know why. Albino still have eyebrows, but this one doesn't. He got screwed by genetics. He got hit by lightning. Uh, just here for John. He slays. Who is Joe? Maybe it's... No, it's not John. I have the action figure. Ooh, Louis has the action figure. You rock, you rock Louis. Let me mention real <laughs> quick, guys. I haven't made a video in uh, over a month now. As some of you know, I've been working on another project. I do want to get that out of the way. I do. I did do it for passion to try something else and to help fund, you know, myself uh, 
working from home uh, that part of my life since it's not full time. Um, but anyway, so I've been working on the RPG tiles, terrain tiles uh, for D&D games and the like. Um, I'm hoping to launch that Kickstarter by the end of this month. Um, but I'm really excited on it. We've had two artists, three, including me, work on it. Dande is one of the artists working on it now. Um, that They are looking awesome. So far, I'm getting good feedback on the look. Um, I got my sample uh, just a couple of days ago. I'm so excited. It, it looks it's, it looks good. I'm, I'm happy with uh, what these guys produced, although the production is a little bit expensive. So in the end, not much profit, but it may open doors for... I don't know, something else for me alongside World of Monsters. Anyway, as soon as I get that done, for so you guys that play D&D and tabletop or even tabletop war games, although these are a little tight for those as they are cave tiles, but I might do different ones in the future. Um, yeah, share your interest. Uh, even if uh, you want a free sample or something and you can share it, uh, contact me. Um, I'm excited about it and look out for that guys. So I know some of you are just here world of monsters. That's it so That's all you're interested, but uh in honor of the hard work Don they put into this myself and another artist that's outside of the monster hood um, I do recommend you check out the tiles and there are some monster layers that we've created so there and even some tiles uh, Have little glim glimpses of monsters not too much because that's up to the dungeon master to put in So I just wanted to shout that out and let you guys know why I've been uh, missing an action on YouTube. Although we've had a great start with, you, start with YouTube this year, which is rare, because January suck for business, especially of this sort. Continuing. Just, okay. That was Dio. Dio had a Monster Master Albino, so apparently he couldn't find one. I was thinking, Dio, you could find some vampire or something from anime. You could have covered the anime side. Um... That is usually your your area of expertise. That would be nice to see. Um, congratulations, C. You get a watermelon. You just leveled up. C's having a robotic poop. A bunch of cogs and and stuff like that. That's okay. Continuing. Um, well, you should. That should be a a topic sometime since uh, Jono and the. Uh, Pro love this one. We should do a topic on uh, uh, monster poop and different monster poop out there. By the way, we got eight viewers no. now, and I'm just rambling. I love you guys. I don't know who oh. else showed up on there, but we got eight viewers on YouTube. Love you guys. Thank you. Let's continue. Illith, it said shared the okay. Darth, Darth, <laughs> Pro, Darth. What do you have for us today? Darth Phoenix. Let's see if he's got an SCP. Thank you, Jono. You gave him Mind Flare. No. Okay, Mind Flare. He gets the next one at 15, level 15. So what are you <laughs> Are you making mistakes? Or is it level 12? Pro! Is it level 12 or... <laughs> Jeez. Is it level 12 or 15? I thought it's 15. Jono's making mistakes. He's still... For the next rank is 15. Yeah, it's 50. <laughs> and then Jono says, typical Slayer work. Yeah. <laughs> Screwing up. I <laughs> uh, love you, Jono. But don't give him the next rank up. Sorry, C. You still need three more levels. C doesn't know what's going on. It's all good. Jesus. With that hairline. Yeah, <laughs> Daxter. You like them, so you know, <laughs> if anybody doesn't know, Dax is a... Uh, one of the monsterite creations here, kind of demon with a big forehead that we always made fun of, and uh, that's why that's Dax, Dax Arthur. Okay, um, Darth, 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 shouting out Darth. Meanwhile, I can share on behalf some of uh, these other guys. Let's cover Louis first. Damn it, Jono, you didn't even take Mind Flayer back off. I have to do it myself. Typical Monster Master work. <laughs> uh, okay, now he did. Good boy. All right. He's got nothing. Beautiful. This was a challenge too tough. Oh, I almost forgot. You were supposed to remind me, Elithid Sid. And any Slayer that's here, 
or Undertaker. Guys, every month we do a monster challenge here that uh, Donde does. And this month, you can always see that if you come to Discord, go to the events. You can see our latest events. And this month's February monster challenge, Monster Maker Challenge, it can be a writing, it can be a drawing, whatever you want. Just create a monster and we'll share it on the monster cast. And Donde does his home uh, own uh, meetup with everybody and... and uh, discusses so it has to relate with love okay any monster that relates to love that's our february themed monster maker challenge topic love Remind monsters me what love is to a monster or oh, loving a monster or what, what how this works hmm. well it could be very violent or it could be very sensual the beauty of monsters well, see, so you can always watch the movie, um, uh, the Guillermo movie. Shape of Water. Yes, there you go. See, if you forget, watch that one. <laughs> I think that's a pleasant take. Okay, I never inspected that. There we go. Have I you seen the movie, relationship see? Relationship with a fish creature? It's a romantic, not platonic. I really don't find it that far-fetched, but then again... Um, moving on. Adrian. Adrian! That was Rocky's wife's name. Um, your turn, Jono. Do you have any albino monster? Oh, yeah, I was supposed to share Louis, but uh, I think Jono doesn't have anything anyway. But let's find out. John Ham. I'm going to tell C that what's teratophilia after this. Inca, see if you didn't read, Inca said, I'm going to tell C what's teratophilia after this. Ooms TV here, wooden bone, a sexy monster. Oom. I guess that says, whom of us here, wooden bone, a sexy monster. Interesting, interesting, you people. I'm liking it. Got some edginess. <laughs> Monster cast 65. Has anybody... Does anybody know who this uh, Joe character is? Jody. No reveals? Okay. My DM is going to cry. P.S. <laughs> uh, didn't want to talk. So. Okay. Jono said, No edginess, just love and appreciation for our monsters. Awesome. You rock, Inca. You belong here. Okay, so Jono said, joking, as I said, albino death claw, just because it's the only one, the only one I like. Maybe the only one you know, Jono, but that isn't awesome. Ooh, that is beautiful. That's awesome graphics. Look at that one, guys. I just uh, blew up the image, the one that Jono posted, or Adrian. It's delightful. <laughs> it's beautiful. And you can see how the details... As in miniature painting or model painting, you would have washes or inks that go into the depths of your model to show the depth, right? Uh, they're a kind of paint that is more watery or thin down. So as you see with this albino creature, all its crevices have a little bit of red, and then the whites are on the... Could <clears throat> be the light rendering in those games are not exactly, you know, um, perfect. Is... Is this actually from the the original <laughs> game, like without being modded or anything? Okay, that's kind of, that looks kind of funny. Pretty awesome. Uh, oh, follow up for our just skin. Oh, so their skin reshading. Okay, so it's not an official thing in the game. But damn, that I that looks beautiful. Just the graphics on that. Anti aliasing. It, it's perfect. Ooh. Um, just a thought. Dinosaurs. We all ex we all agree dinosaurs were awesome, prehistoric animals. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Now imagine your favorite dinosaur in albino form. Hmm. I'm pretty sure I bred hey, one in is. the uh, Jurassic World game. Sweet. What a tough life would it would have to... Because that's such a 
just a, a battling animal planet, you know, and then surviving to grow to your full size. Let's see. Imagine one of the long naked one being albino, like a sour drop or albino. Mm hmm. Yeah, especially your bravurous ones, like a brachiosaur, a super sore, albino. What a what a godly creature that would be. Um, Jono says they just have a few HP more. Okay, so the modders did make it a little stronger. Okay. And no mod. It's literally Deathclaw model color white. Gotcha. But it certainly does look uh, albino rather than just white. So that works. I like the Chameleon Deathclaw way more, though, says Pro. That looks interesting. It looks definitely more uh, radiated than the other. Maybe. Okay. Team Spino. There's uh, him. The albinos are not modded. Arthur. Oh, okay. So they are in the original. Gotcha. So you're talking I about the I am with the color. Team Spino. The Spino is cooler than T-Rex. I just think it's funny that there have to be these teams. <laughs> this is where I'm out. <laughs> I think they both rock. I don't think T-Rexes have lost anything since new dinosaurs have been discovered. They're as cool as they've ever been, and the other ones are as cool Less cool or even cooler, depending. All right, let me share on behalf of Louis. Louis, do I have it saved? Yes, I do. There we go. Louis and a dog, of course, shared. Um, even though he's not among us here, he's on YouTube. The albino monster I bring today is the Dunwich Horror. He is an albino monster that was conceived by the Union of Lavinia. Wedele and dark uh, god Yog Sagoth. His birth was meant to free the great old ones and reclaim Earth. Before I continue, let me put up an image for all those visual people. His body or form was large, full of tentacles and tendrils, and has a human like face that resembles his grandfather. He had many red, red eyes around his body and the flesh was pale. He was kept secret for many years by his grandfather and his mother. He was fed cattle to, to which he drained their blood and eventually would devour his meal. He was a bi as big as a barn and his many legs left barrel-sized footprints. Sweet, we got something from Lovecraft. We got the next field covered. Uh... Hmm. Ooh, this might be one of my favorites today. Oh, that, is that the story about the thing in the bar? Yes, that is the Dunwich Horror. Ah. So, looking at the writings, if the original writings do give it red eyes and pale skin, that's certainly albino qualities there. It um, was originally invisible, but after being... Of course, it became visible, but white. Hmm. So it has that ability. Um, or that's the story. I'm no character. I'm Joe. I've come to share one word, an important word. Close. What's the word, Joe? What do you know, Joe? Um, don't forget to share the one I sent to you. Yep. So, what else can we say? It's an also albino creature. This is uh, <laughs> what some of you expected. Um, we don't know much more. Uh, I guess we covered that in real life situations, um, especially with the xenomorph. If we saw something white and not black. Again, I, I go back to what C said of something white looking less real and in a way i would say maybe not more scary but more creepy um because looking at well, the different there monsters is two ways that it could work if, if it's anything should be white and one of them would be that it is simply so grotesquely standing out from everything around it or it is simply so um what's it called shocking when you finally see it in such a way that it will, the shock will carry on. Right. 
Um, with a lot of animals, we have also white morphing, sort of morphing for adaptation with winter, right? As we see with uh, hares and uh, weasels. Various animals, they change their fur and it turns white for winter to blend better with the environment of snow. So we have that. But still, white is a rather not common thing seeing in nature. Um, and so, yet again, artificial, out of this world, a little bit odd. And so I believe in the monster world that should be honored. If you're thinking of that you know, cartoony monster world of, hey, the uglier you are, the better you are, right? That everything's opposite, like Adam's family, you know, that kind of humor. Then in that world, I could see them being higher because they're more rare. And in those worlds, everything's the opposite, right? It's opposite day every day. Um, I, hope I, I hope that made sense. I could go on, but I feel it made enough. <laughs> yes, he was able to be invisible. Cool. So invisible, huge, tentacly. I, I definitely give it to this one to be the craziest, uh, scariest, most epic monster of the day so far. But let, we have one more, and then I wanted to share mine, which I'm glad nobody covered because it's from uh, some older books as well. But before we go into that, let's go in and talk uh, Raincrawler's share. There we go. If you are watching on YouTube... Here's some pictures. I'll maybe just share one from Raincrawler. Um, let me share his text right here. And there we go. All right, going back. Let's grab an image. Let's grab this one. Copy image address just for our Discord people. This is what I do for you guys. Don't Don't tell me I never do anything for you. There we go. It's a good image. It covers a few. Okay. So he says, hello. Uh, okay. Hello, this is the monster cast, Albino Monsters, ultra humanite, a scientific genius with a sick and crippled body. He was the first supervillain that Superman fought. Oh, wow. I didn't know. He transplanted his brain into a giant albino mutant gorilla body which gives him incredible strength and durability. There you have it, folks. Albinoism is relevant. It was the first villain Superman fought. He was, he was, I'm sorry. he was the original Lex Luthor, but with a wheelchair. Well, I have a new one. Well, not a new one as much as I have something else. Okay. One. Here's another so image. This is basically the third super intelligent monkey villain in DC that I know right. of. Watch is the second because Gorilla Grodd is only one of them. Yes, Gorilla Grodd is the other one, and then you have Tumala. Oh, great. More of that. And it. There is a joke to be made about how the difference that beats super. Hidden cities. Why? Why? Albino gorilla. That's something interesting to look at, too. Um, okay, so in this case, again, being albino made them superior in a way, at least in this writer's, creator's uh, point of view. I would like to see this lore, this idea of albinoism, albi albinism. Caught me, Chris. I heard your thoughts. Um Explored more in different lore. I think it's uh, it's an interesting starting point to dig deeper into your lore. So sometimes when you're world building and you think you got it all covered, I think it's a nice little side note and see where it goes from there too because it's, it's going to touch upon topics of racism, things like that within the species. Uh, holy crap, forgot about this guy. Yep. That's a nice one, Sid. Sid uh, posted a picture of a almost indigo-colored uh, lobster. And he said one in 200 million. There, there are blue type of crayfish. Um, those are cool looking. But this one apparently is a regular. Just It has this morph of 
this blue color and it looks awesome and i could definitely see that helping it even hide maybe in the depths nice so that's an actual morph that is actually helping it survive rather than what albinism does detective chimp and gorilla grod right on so uh, that's yeah, the detective everyone but me but before i isn't an entire city filled with intelligent monkey yeah it was made by gorilla grod gorilla island he made the city how did he make what was the city so in breeding i don't, I don't know. know he basically uplifted other gorillas and primates and made them uh smart and rain did say that jmpf was correct that was the original lex luther man they got a, they could have gone a totally different way huh so we we've got a second let's call it franchise because now that's what they are i don't like that word but uh too much but so you have the original xenomorph could have been an albino the original lex luther could have been an albino monkey where would the these franchises again go with these originals if they continued with them instead of changing hmm the mistakes you can make and you never know when you're creating something epic or not mistakes maybe they would have gone bigger who knows i think somewhere like japan or asia i think the monkey thing would work because of uh certain things they have in the <clears throat> mythology and uh and even culture but uh interesting so what, oh yes see see share yours what else you had there oh well i had a i have a single one because it's this is lovecraft too but it is an entirely different kind of uh, monster in the mountains of madness we have this beautiful beautiful city beyond the great mountains of antarctica we we know now that there's no such place but we have this beautiful, beautiful city that has been remaining from a time before time when the Earth was governed by other things known as um, Elder Things. Elder Things, I think. For a Not moment, just I the old you ones. said yes, Elder, and I was going to be very upset. Well, I don't quite remember, but the thing is that they we have... A... The they are called Elder Things? Yes. The thing is that um, they had a little case of uh, Shargoth, and um, that resulted in um, them forcing them being forced into extinction, and natural life took over and evolved as albino penguins uh, developed instead. Huge albino penguins. Hmm. Oh, let me this one here. Huge albino and blind. Without eyes. Yes. Oh. Fascinating Even creatures. I mean, they're, they're albino and all, but hey, you, you got the idea. Um. It's it's one of love. It's not exactly a monster, but it's it's just fascinating that this is probably one of the most harmless creatures in the entire team right. of the Lovecraft with us. Well, it's of the beast theory, so it's a, a mythological animal, right? No, so not no really. Sense. It's just a big Monster. land bird living on Antarctica inside of a city. Meaning there probably is a way down into the water where the Sharkov lives. Well, oh yeah, spoilers for the Mountains of Madness. Um, Sharkovs are, were servant creatures that were given more and more intelligence and was basically the universal... What's it called? <clears throat> Yeah, uh, what's it called? <clears throat> the universal, what's it called? Um, it was a biological servant, a biological construct. I was used to serve the elder things, but eventually it rose up with, due to its intelligence and, uh, you know, decided to uh, <laughs> kill everyone. To independize themselves and to turn the tables on their old masters? Yes. So this penguin, see, uh, the way you were presenting it, it's one of a kind, or are there more of them? 
there were an entire colon living breeding colony of these things. There were a lot of them. So yeah. Um, so it is said that they flee them. from the shark off in the story. It is said that there are lots of them, giant birds of some kind. Damn, I have to hand they it were, to Lovecraft. They were basically what they, they were where the shark gods feed it on. I don't remember because they went down underneath the oceans. And I don't know what they fed on there, but we can only imagine what kind of li wildlife. Good work, John. So, <clears throat> well, so guys, any purposes? We don't know what they're feeding on. Well, we can only assume that it has a way for uh, was... for them to get to a food source of some kind that doesn't require sight. I say they were the shogots food, the shogots hunted them. I don't know if that is described. Hmm. Are they any more intelligent than regular penguin? No, nope, just penguins. I've just <laughs> found them to be adorable. They, I, like I, I love it. Penguins are adorable. Any thoughts, guys? Seems pretty dope, actually. Uh, I never thought I'd be terrified of penguins, but there we go. Yeah, leave it to Lovecraft. Happy Fee gave them a false reputation. <laughs> hmm. So. Oh, yeah, oh, and because oh. honorable mentions, uh, this is a Shoggoth. Shoggoth. Loads shotgun with malicious intent. I don't think <laughs> a luck. single shotgun is going to do it. Yeah. These um, shotguns are supposed to be some of the most horrifying non Eldoth gods uh, or god like creatures. And because there's supposed to be more of them, and they're roaming freely around Antarctica, for all we know. Second albino creature with long tongue. Right. Well, I I like it. I like something that's um, I like if a monster is not so deep, maybe by skill, ability, and lore, but at least aesthetically pleasing or pleasing in a monstrous sense. Because this is nothing attractive, but it's attractive in a monstrous way. It's it's just it it works. This penguin, uh, especially from what I see here from these renditions. Um. And it doesn't need more. It doesn't need more than that. Just, just being a a, a a penguin. Found up one with better general. resolution. Yeah, but uh, uh, with a it bit more. It was supposed to. See, it's a fascinating creature for no reason. Mm. It's opposed to the very sight of this bulbing mass of half-formed eyes that continuously form and reshape themselves, mouth, orifices, mm. all kinds of stuff, moving a moving wall of flesh, eyes, and black, moving towards you. Love it. Let's Shout out. people mad. Shout Come out, on, guys, awesome. to the movie... Uh... Mouth of in the mouth of madness, one of my favorite horror films of all time. Uh, biased, but um, definitely has Lovecraftian uh, uh, influence, which I didn't know at the time. But now I see why I love the movie. Um, in the mouth of madness, again, Sam Neill I mean, from Jurassic you can Park. Find some, uh, you can find them on uh, uh, and multiple. Places to find audiobooks, of course. Yes, yes, <laughs> of course. Me, I'm thinking I'm crazy. <laughs> cool. Perfect, JMPF. You have reached the next level of being a true monsterite. He said, my family is talking about me and thinking I'm crazy. But right now or in general, whichever, that's awesome. And uh, to all those naysayers... <laughs> they're talking to me, speaking in English, and they're thinking I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Good job, JMPF. Proud of you. Um, we are hitting upon two hours. Uh, Pro and Jono was saying that this could last a very short time. I was actually kind of hoping it would be nice to do a monster cast once in a while that's an hour long so we can get done earlier. 
but uh, I, I do enjoy my time. Talking for half an hour about albinism. Twenty and minutes, see, and and you are one to I'm talk. Sick. Do you realize, C, that you have a position here that's called Moments with C because your ramblings, and you're the one to yes. talk about my rambling, which is actually on topic and a good I intro? I do things very shortly. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. I have like four seconds or ten seconds at most with my ramblings. Do yes. I not ramble as well? In C I'm time. I'm sure I ramble sometimes. <laughs> yes, and Chris too. So uh, I remember. I can remember you talking for like 10 minutes. Yeah. Me? No, see. Yeah, oh. see. See, was like talking for a long time. Even uh, today. Time. But he's the one to say that. I mean, if, if somebody like JMPF says that or Dio or even Pro, then I get it. But to cease to say that and being impatient, come on. We we have the <laughs> harp waiting for you here. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, no, I'm glad that it is at two hours because, uh, well, I wanted to cover the last one. Uh, are you done, C, with your shares? Yes, I don't think we have any more penguins to, uh, <laughs> to th Okay. Um, loved it. And talking about the great, because finally it's down to the great writers to really, I don't know, to kind of push this. And I did mention, I want to see more of this in media and, most a lot of writers suck it's it's rare that we get a good writer and they become you know timelessly known and here we go I with mean, lovecraft, lovecraft too uh, writing style is something on its own it's rather mm -hmm. fascinating as it is um well it's not revolutionary in any way shape or form mm -hmm. but he does give that particular what's it called feeling of and he captures it perfectly. He pioneered it. He invented it. It's named after him. Right. Um, and I can't wait to read, uh, go deeper and read uh, Lovecraft's work. See, um, certainly motivating me to do that even more so. That's uh, the next time I read a fantasy or something. Uh, that's what I'm going into, Lovecraft. And you can be sure there's going to be videos popping out about that when I do get to that. But the, right. the writer... Excellent. The writer I speak I'll of... I'll have to send you something, then. That'd be awesome, see. Yeah. And if you guys have any books, because there's a lot of different copies of Lovecraft's work now for, by different publishers, if you have the best one... I know somebody sent me one once on YouTube. Please send me links on Amazon or whatever. I would like the best, most complete, just... I don't care price. Price is not a factor in this... There we go. I'll check out your, your message after I know where the chat. See. Sorry, James? I know where to find an encyclopedia about the themes in the books. Right. Uh, see, and there's a lot of supporting text. Okay. Yeah, send me all this stuff you can. Um, I know there's a lot of supporting text, I, but I want... I, I also want the original writings. I don't want to rewrite or something, you know. I don't think there are too many. I don't think it's that old. But I well, it is from the last century. Yeah, which yeah, that doesn't say too much since we're on the ed on the cusp almost. But um, but I, rather than maybe a new, uh, remake of the book, I would like to maybe find one of the older ones. So if you guys can find something, something for a true Lovecraft cre a collector, let me know. I'm I'm always uh on the lookout for that, and I might just get it, and I might even share it on the channel. So the, the the writer I wanted to share now that also, I don't know if he covered albinism, but it's al albinism, is Tolkien. And I speak of, I think mainly The Hobbit. Because in The Hobbit, who was the leader orc? The pale one? The pale one. I'm not sure if he was albino again. Here he is. Impaled, mayhaps. Albino he uncle. <laughs> Pearl's uncle again. He could have stayed a bit too long in the tanning machine. You do realize. You, 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 no, that's not how it works. You don't just bleach orcs. <laughs> yes. Bleaching orcs. What a hobby. I wonder how much the guy gets paid that bleaches orcs for a living. I don't know. Not <laughs> enough, probably. It's yeah, they never make enough for those dirty jobs. 
Um, so you have these two orcs. I think the second one is also from The Hobbit, right? Yeah, it's not from Lord of the Rings. I don't know if Lord of the Rings had any. If you guys find something, let me know. Probably so did. I didn't think too much about the topic of albinism and monsters prior to this chat. I was confident we'd find out stuff, but then when I saw our two overly active people in Discord whining about it, I, I started thinking a little bit more about the topic, and uh, I didn't lose any uh, confidence, but I did start thinking, hmm, what actually is there? Because I knew I'd find something in the spur of the moment. But yeah, then I, I found these orcs almost immediately when I searched it. And when you look at them, and, and that's something I thought about when, while watching the movie. And I'm sure maybe it hit you guys too, you're watching, and then you realized, hey, wait a minute, these white ones are actually the leaders. So you have these albino or not. Uh, the second one certainly looks albino. Um, they're in higher positions. And it's probably that stuff we've talked about. I would like to maybe imagine... all orcs are actually just pale. They just take showers. Ooh, nice. <laughs> Which makes them even better because they got class. They act like kings. They take showers. That's awesome, see? <laughs> That's a bad take. Though. That's, That's a know. cool meme, actually, what C said. Like, all orcs are, are albino or white. I think I'm not saying that name. <laughs> Something Which tells me... Name? That, that is today's political climate. Pro, I said two overly active members... <laughs> And I'm talking about my own monsterhood. Donde and Griffo, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, Did we hear of any albino S today? Because I kind of tuned out at one point. Albino what? Any albino SCPs today? Darth Phonix. No, has Darth. shared anything. Darth has said he couldn't find anything. I'm sure there's something in the thousands. So my question to you guys is, because I'd like to imagine... So before I ask you guys on the actual lore, if we do know, um, my question or my, my imagining is going from what we've talked about, albinoism, alb albinism, and an, in the beast livinghood, such as animals and in societies, I would imagine that these orcs, uh, although in Tolkien, at least in the films, the orcs, kind of the leaders are already like formed, you know, they're not like found, they're actually formed already. So in this case, because it, it, I was thinking, well, these orcs were growing up, but they don't really grow up. But I was thinking they were growing up and they were picked on and they became extra hard skinned, extra tough because of that. And the, hence, the white ones, the albino ones are in charge because they suffered so much from the others. But it doesn't seem to be the case in this lore. Tell me from you guys, because I'm sure you've read more Tolkien than I have, if this is mentioned, if these pale orcs are actually in the books, not just the movie. I personally haven't come across them other than, you know, Azog himself, because he is referred to as the pale orc. Uh, it, in the book as well. I could note. Yeah. Only thing I can note uh, regarding this is... Uh, it's uh, these following your reasoning that these orcs, because they're picked on more actively, uh, they become hardier. Uh, it's good they're in Tolkien's universe because I think that's the only. In the case of Warhammer orcs, that would not work. The moment one pops up that just don't, don't look right, like the rest of them, they immediately clobber it to death. And that's uh -huh. why orcs don't get gene stealer infestations. <laughs> well, they do, mm. but it's rare. It's like a lot rarer than seeing a gray knight on a battlefield. It's a lot rarer than a custodes. And yet they have an army. Somehow. Some fucking how. Yeah. Uh, Mark Peters. Yet one more thing about which the orcs are better at than the Eldar. Keeping the gene stealers out of their myths. The orcs are built on such a simplistic template. That they have, when the Eldar loses one, they lose a percentage of their race. When the orc loses one, they have about a billion more to throw at it. <laughs> it is simply a question about numbers. 
Mm -hmm. Inca said, please don't drag C for his monologues. Uh, by the way, what was Lovecraft's cat's name? Do not. No. no. Do not. No, do not no, Google do it. Not. The do stream not. will get demonetized and the channel will be put on. Do not Google it. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Uh, somebody mentioned it earlier. Uh, Mark Peters says no red eyes, so not albino. I would agree, Mark Peters. Although the the first one or the second one, that Thank middle one, you. Orc, I forgot his name. Yes. What's his Sneaky name? Bastard. Gothmog, I think. <laughs> This one does look more albino, uh, although his eyes still look dark. Just the the pink pigmentation in the skin makes him look more albino than uh, the main orc here. Say it, Arthur. Say love. Uh, okay, and Louis also said. So we'll talk about this uh, soon, Louis. He said, "Hey, for the next monster cast, can I vote for infected or parasitized factions, not including the zombie?" Maybe we kind of talked about. We technically talked about that. Yeah, other infected stuff, or zombie types. We did a whole thing like that. I know not many people were mm. at that monster cast. I think it was me and Chris mostly. That's it. But it was, it was a good one too. Uh, I did. See, while Z can randomly ramble, if you give me a topic, I'll I may I am able <laughs> to go on and lead a stream. That stream is a a testament to that. Well, that's good because sometimes I need that even if i'm not present obviously i do it i do it too much um i wouldn't mind we'll see in the future um let's see uh blue eyes black i haven't had a mon i don't i don't think we've had a monster cast where i didn't enjoy it or it wasn't interesting if we have had one please let me know yeah i was about to say when it comes to just long rambles and stuff uh, Z is Shigoreth, and I'm Jiggleck. Hmm. What? What? You just chaotically ramble about stuff, and I'm more focused. Uh, hey, yeah, we have right. a python breeder <laughs> among right. us. Now you're going to tell me that you're not familiar with Shigoreth and Jiggleck. From, I don't uh, know who the War. second one is, because I know the guy with cheese wheels. <laughs> okay, Steve. So, so, uh, Arthur, if you permit, a bri very brief uh, Elder Scrolls lore. Would you permit it? If you literally mean very brief. Okay. So, one of the Daedric Princes is called Jigalak, and he is the complete opposite of all the rest, because he is an Order Daedr Daedric Prince. Like, he is fully logical, reasoning, and basically envisioned uh, how everything will transpire with the universe. And so he started expanding his own realm in uh, Oblivion. Because of that, uh, the other Daedric Princes didn't like that because he was too OP for them to handle. So they all ganged up on him and cursed him to turn into Shegarath. So the ultimate being of order gets turned into the ultimate being of madness and chaos. So uh, would that mean that eventually when the people that you don't, that don't like you uh, rise up, you'll turn into me? I don't know. Uh, we won't make a necron out of you yet. <laughs> <laughs> and every 100 years to back from Shigoreth to Jigalak and see all that he's built ravaged by himself and he tried to fix it then he turned back to Shigoreth wreck it and that would continue until uh, the Obl uh, Elder Scrolls for Oblivion where the hero of the game defeats Jigalak and is instead transformed into the current Shigoreth while Jigalak is freed from his curse so basically the player character swaps places with him and is now the current so the current Chigorath, the guy with the cheese wheels that you see in uh, Skyrim is the hero from Oblivion whilst Jigalag is off plotting how to return and probably kick the asses of all the other Daedric princes Jigalath Jigalak Jigalak that and the white thing they they win the the silliest name contest uh, for me today, the White Thang. <laughs> the White Thang. That's a song. <laughs> um, we could do a monster, monsterhood uh, parody song of a uh, Wild Thang, but do White Thang and talk about the cryptid in the song. What a waste of time that'll be. Sweet. Oh, the white thang. <laughs> 
so wow thing. Question, uh, what are the topics for next time that we can vote right. on? Right. So let me wrap up with this one. I also wanted to mention, so we do have, uh, Mark Peters said, blue eyes, black eyes, and pink eyes are leucistic, and red eyes are albino. I breed pythons for a hobby. So Mark Peters, I think you came a little late, but that's what I spent the first 20 minutes talking about that Z was whining about. Um, <laughs> was, well, albino uh, was ball python breeding and animals in general. Um, so that's awesome, Mark Peters. That just makes you even cooler. You're a python breeder. You get it. And yes, leucistic. Um, so in the end, guys, so what I wanted to share that was interesting I found with the albinism that I mentioned, albinism many times, is, damn it, I hope I don't make a video for YouTube with the word albinism, because I'll fuck it up. Okay, so, um, as, like I saw in the, in the Hobbit movie, they can be regarded higher than others. As we've talked, they can be regarded lower than others. But what other possibilities could there be in your culture, in your world building, in your monster creation? Um, I would like to see more of that. I would like to see Warhammer, as big as it is, have something a, a more... I'm sure they do than w only what Chris mentioned, but I'd like to see more on the topic of... Because it's not the topic of albinism. It's the topic of when somebody is born looking or being differently than the rest and a lot of the stuff we talk about they have a military society or something that they're they're predators right a lot of monsters we talk about so it is a very relevant in their social structures in their cultures whatever be it in their lores uh so what did you say influence this would be? And, uh, albinism <clears throat> yes Albinism. albinism. What is albinism? <laughs> so therefore... The topic of our... <laughs> Thank you, C. It That's why I spent like the albinism. first 20 minutes talking. <laughs> Explaining exactly oh, yeah, that. that. Um, albino tyran tyran tyranids. Tyranids? Tyranids? No, that's a lizard, man. That this would be cool Gorok. to see. Uh, so uh, I want to leave you guys with that. White... Lizard. I want to leave you guys with He's that. Thick boy. Oh, and uh, Harry Potter had a, not necessarily a, an albino dragon, but a white dragon. A uh, really cool looking dragon, actually. If you look at all the dragons out there, though, that one from Harry Potter was rather an awesome design. It's huzzah to those uh, creators. So for you creators here, you artists, you lore writers, we have some creatives here. That's why we do these monster casts too, to give ideas to people, to brainstorm on stuff that people don't venture to is explore those natural mutations that can happen and i certainly will put an effort to do that in my future all about videos because as i talked about gorgons or chimeras or whatever i talked about i always explore the different morphs they could be born in their different appearances and sometimes i touch upon the topic of albinism but not always because that's also relevant to how developed the monster is so you know whatever that monster like gorgons how relevant is it will they be higher in society lower ignored the regular and what other types of morphs other than albinism are there so just something food for thought for future if you guys are creating anything writing books there we go that's why we did this he's going to sleep let's do a vote for the next monster cast see a darth damn he could have been the tiebreaker so, Louis, do you still want the parasitic, uh, that was you that mentioned that, right? Monsters, um, let me know what you want exactly, Louis. I'll disregard what you said earlier for now. Um, just put it plainly so I can put it in the vote. John's favorite ponies. Who is this Joe guy? I feel like there's a joke behind my back again. Isn't there always? Yes, please add a John Hon Hmm. <laughs> Isaac was the only one to be mentioned I'm as the great going to pass out soon. Thank you, Louis. Uh, Louis said Azog was the only great white orc to be mentioned. Okay. So, Azog, and that was him. So, there wasn't the other one. And that wasn't oh, like the white dwarf, but I think that's just his hair. Oh. <laughs> white dwarf. And I just saw again from Warhammer. A, dwarf for a white dwarf magazine at the bookstore, and it's beautiful. 
It's been a long time since I looked at a white dwarf. Please don't cut that clip of my saying out. Um, but it's been a while. And uh, I grew up, you know, that was my Warhammer influence. I didn't see it on the internet. I didn't have friends. I saw a white dwarf. I got it. I was reading through battle scenarios. And it was so awesome. Um, but now Warhammer is sold out a bit more. And I mean, Games Workshop and... And, and they don't do those catalogs. You used to get a catalog. You could pick it up for free from your hobby store that would show you all the latest models. Now they charge everything. There's nothing free. There, it's, you know. And I, I just heard that War Games Workshop is a multi-billion, not trillion, I think, but multi-billion dollar. I think thing, they're so. these... The sixth, possibly trillion. seventh uh, biggest uh, economic company in the UK. That's crazy. I'm glad. They rock. I just hope... Uh, well, there's always negatives, right? As as Chris would say, Age of Shipmar would be one of those negatives. So. Yes. Nothing I mean, can stay good forever. Also, this one awful, horrible thing called Belisarius Call. Don't know. We do not speak of Call. We kind of have to. He was in the latest episode. No. Okay, guys. He was clearly there. Uh, please write down your votes, what you want to be voted on today. And remember, I'm we all... for John Hahn Monsters. This is all fair because I don't... This isn't all World of Monsters. Well, even World of Monsters, I asked for opinions and such. We vote together. So when you start whining, Pro and Giano... <laughs> All week, remember, we voted for this. Majority won. Suck it up. <laughs> and it's going <laughs> to rock either way because we have great minds here, great personalities, and you yourselves can come up with pretty awesome stuff. So, with that said, let's vote fairly for the next topic. Louis, anybody on YouTube, bring up the next topic. There is a lot of sheep people or sheeple that will follow a being with strange looking features. That key. Yeah, exactly, Louis. He said that a lot of people would follow something they consider beautiful or divine, something weird. Exactly. Um, that's even how crazy people have been followed in history. And look what happened. Uh, Hitler uh, and such. And uh, who knows at this point, Jesus, he could have been a crazy guy just talking a lot of stuff and gained some followers. Um you stick out, something's going to happen. You got big jobs. Okay, so... <laughs> uh, yeah, so it could be good or bad, Louis. Yep. See, Raincrawler, um, sorry you didn't hit the vote. I'm not seeing people putting up any ideas. Guys, in the cool. chat, I'm not going to scroll up too high. If you mention something you want me to to be a topic, please I mention it to now. I, I have to go. Goodbye, everyone. See you, JMPF. Do you have any topic you want to mention? Uh, I, I don't know. Mm. Okay. You will be happy with everything. No, 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 no. Cool. You rock. Okay. See you and don't uh, give in to your parents calling you crazy. Or do. Okay, Parasite Monster mm. Factions. Okay, so Louis said the difference Louis said this time is factions. So let's see. All I'm seeing so far is John Ham. Looks like Chris is on board too. He's he's oh yes. because Chris wants his own freaking uh, role, his own rank. No, I just I don't I just want to <laughs> John Han <Hall> monster. Okay, <laughs> Jono, there you go. You better stop crying and become a real slayer now. If you do get this, uh, you mean Dante and Griffo Arthur? Yeah, sure. Unique monster power-ups. Okay, so we got unique monster power-ups. Thank, thank you for making that bold, uh, Pro. I'll give you a watermelon for that, actually. Helps me out with all this uh, headache of text. Chris says John. Uh, John says John. <laughs> Lovecraft monsters. Have we had that? I don't think so. So Lovecraft monsters is one. Is another one. And unique monster power-ups, okay, and uh, and a parasite. I think that's enough. 
I'm thinking I should come up with something, but we've gone too long. It's almost mm-hmm. two and a half hours. Let's finish up. People are dropping off. Uh, how many people we got? Only two. Yeah, we're done. So you cannot resist us, Arthur. I know. I can't. I can't. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's make a vote. So, uh, C. Let's start with C, since uh, I think he's gonna break the vote. I hope. I hope he votes for something good. C. Z. Vote for John Hall monsters. <laughs> what is that even? Exactly. C. Does so. <laughs> <laughs> Chris doesn't even know. Do, do, do you know at this point, Chris? I think you probably do. You've probably looked into it enough. Um, <laughs> Somewhat. So I mean, Lovecraft is nice and all, but didn't we already have that? I feel like we did, or at least they get mentioned enough. Um, see, I'll repeat the things. So it's John Ham monsters, uh, unique monster power-ups or transformations, and... Lovecraft monsters and parasite monster factions. Well, I would love me some Lovecraft, but I think parasites is the most unique things we have had so far. So you vote for that? Yes. Okay. And that's factions. So that'll be a little different. That'll be exploring social things. So interesting. Lovecraft. Uh, okay. So Rita votes Lovecraft. We got two for Lovecraft. Oh goodness, this is gonna be hard. Okay, pro pro, are you voting your own? And pro, are you being legit? Did Darth f- vote for unique monster power ups? Anybody want to argue that? Oh, he did. He did. Thank you, pro. Cool. So that's good. Okay, so pro and Chris votes Johnny. Johnny. Mm-hmm. Uh, Illithid votes. Lovecraft, Dio votes. Dio, I think he'll be the tiebreaker. What do you vote, Dio? Dio, vote in line with us. Mr. Victim. We have JoJo memes. (laughs) That's true, huh? At this point, I don't care anymore. It seems not even in the monster hood I can make everybody happy anymore. So whatever the hell you guys (laughs) want, I'll have fun. It's too big with only like 10 active. <laughs> uh, they're opinionated. Oh, God. He's fallen to slumber. He's out of the game. And then he complains that I don't listen to him. Uh. <laughs> Thank you, John. Sorry, Otto. I can't talk about a monster well, today. Well, we can't say Lovecraft. I, will, I can change my vote to Lovecraft. Let's see. Can I? Uh, Dio uh, has did select, give a vote. It is posted. Where it's is all this? Legal. Oh, it he did legal. vote. That son of a bitch. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Do we have a voting channel? I haven't noticed. No. No, we're, uh, just the main area. So that looks like we have three for. Th- Wait, no, I can still, I can still set a tie. I'm going to do it, Chris. Yeah. And I have more reason because the troll topic monsters. was good and I did I made a tie for fun. But for this I don't know. It, it also depends how good of a slayer Jono's been and he's been he's been, you know he lost his rank already this week once. Okay, Arthur, let me try and sell the John Han monster. <laughs> okay. What is a John Han monster? Just let me pitch it to you. <laughs> so you know how John keeps asking for it time and time again? If you do it and do like a, with a Band-Aid and just get it over with, that's it. True. True. But it's not this. But there's also ways the fun of torturing John too, right? See, uh, after a while, torture <laughs> gets boring. Mm-hmm. Mm, sure. And it's not good pers- points. It's I wouldn't call this torture. It's more like an inconvenience. So it doesn't have a charm of you know getting to strap someone down to a <sighs> table and then get the toolbox, get to go and uh, it doesn't have that flair. It's merely quit it. Formality, quit it, Chris. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see here. Okay. <laughs> Let me tally up everything because. Uh, we do have two more votes for Lovecraft. 
coming from YouTube. <laughs> uh, Pro's been an okay Undertaker after he realized that I gave him a rank like three weeks ago. <laughs> okay, so uh, left craft more uh, tombstone moves, pile drivers on others. Lovecraft has three votes. Parasite has two votes. Jono has three votes. Four. Four. It's him, Pro, me, and Dio. Oh, I need to. We need to quit that shit. Okay. Um. So I think the runner-up. Why didn't unique monster power-ups get more? Damn it. <laughs> That has how many? Like two? I would have voted for that. That's like the best topic here today. Like the most original one and actually good. No shout out to Pro there. It's just a quality topic. But then we got this. What the hell is going on here? Parasite got two. So I'm going to have to vote for Lovecraft or John. Really? Lovecraft? I mean, I love Lovecraft, but we cover Lovecraft almost every monster cast already. I know... Just Get it over without that. Newer people. Make the pain be swift. It will pass oh, away. jono has been bugging me. He's been bugging me. <laughs> That's one less bug to deal with. He posts ran he even admitted he shit posts. That's why he's Slayer. He said F you to me. Uh, I don't know. Well, wouldn't that put him in his place? He thinks that <laughs> you uh, nice. he can just keep on doing this without any consequence, and suddenly you go, bam, okay, it's John Hon Monsters. And he'll be like, um, I didn't expect to get this far, and he'll need to actually prepare and take up responsibility as a slayer. Okay. Well, no, he can't even stream. He can't even stream. What a man. <laughs> okay, if we do John Ham. So, okay, for everybody that's confused why this is even a thing. I mean, there are five watching. Okay, let me explain in short, very brief. Uh, John, our monster right here, really loves a metal band and singer known as John Hagen. He wants, and he posts everything about him. He's just a big fan of his, uh, his work particularly. And he wants us for fun to do a monster cast about John Ham monsters. Uh, and that's it. That's the whole thing. The whole, it's the whole joke about this. Just everybody's aware. So in case we do do this, if I'm not, if we cancel, okay, here are some rules. If we do John Ham monsters, that monster cast cannot be postponed. <laughs> Got it? That means if it's going to, it's, if it's supposed to happen, and if I can't make it, or if you guys don't get together, it doesn't get postponed to next week. We still continue with a new topic. That's kind of cheating because you're going to say... Jeez, you're really on it. It'll say, uh, I, while meditating, a demon attacked me and I fended it off bravely, but it left me scarred so soul-wise. And I cannot participate. <laughs> nice. Also, oh. Jono, can you run that monster cast? Aha. Yes, Jono would need to speak. And speak up. None of that mumbling, none of the tears. Speak up loud and clear like John Ham himself. <laughs> okay. Just a question because I'm a little bit confused. So emoji that uh jano is posting that is not jano's face that's the face yes that's the face of john ham not not jano not all this time i've been thinking that these pictures of the person with that i know even when you know it's not you get used to it and he becomes him he's a sick person <laughs> I, I hope i never have to run into jano in real life <laughs> oh come now <laughs> i'm kidding you you never know if you think this and you don't know his real face. Maybe oh, you have goodness. Already. What a headache. So, I'm going to leave it to C. Um, but, hold on. 
I'm afraid because we got these new viewers, which is great. We've been wanting more YouTube viewers. We finally get them, and now we screw it up with John Ham monsters, and they never come back to our monster what cast. What is that? Does I anybody see else see that system. here or me? Am I taking crazy pills? <laughs> I wouldn't call it ruining. I'd call it a success. What is a John Ham monster? Okay, see, see, you're a respectable member here. You made your mistakes today, but I forgave you. I still love you as a monsterite. I hope you feel the same here. But I leave what this responsibility to you, C. C, you tell me. For the next monster cast, are we going to be talking Lovecraft monsters or John Hum monsters? I, f I feel like that Lovecraft is the better of those two. No. Because I don't know what the other is. Logical Nobody thinking. Nobody tells me. I mentioned it already. See, are you missing all the parts where I explain something and just think I'm rambling? I'm not rambling. See, I'm explaining. I told you it's a. He's a metal band singer that John O here really likes, and he always yeah, posts things about him. Lovecraft all the way. <laughs> all right, don't blame me. C said it. Don't blame C either. Blame the vote. Now if C If C doesn't show up next time and he broke this vote, should we talk about John Ham Monsters then? Yes, let's talk about John Ham Monsters. Just consider this as a ripping off the band aid. Just a quick motion, get it over <laughs> and you'll never have to that's so ridiculous. Those two members I mentioned said how we wouldn't last more than an hour or something today with our discussion, but now everybody's voting John Ham Monsters. Yet, like, yeah, that's going to last for an hour and a half. I know with us it will, because anything will, but will it be quality stuff? Shouldn't we do that for yes. April Fool's Day? Hmm. Oh, why would it be April I'm contemplating too much. I need to just let this go. Exterminate. I might have to rewatch. I'm late for voting. Pain is too. <laughs> Inca, who do you vote for? Oh, you already voted. John's just eye candy. And Joe apparently has the hots for you, Jono. So there you have it. I'm sure they support you. See you, Rita. Oh, goodness. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm going to say Lovecraft is our next chat. Yes. Oh, but we already did Lovecraft ones, though. Lovecraft is the gift that keeps giving. Was it all Lovecraft? Yes, we have done Lovecraft before. What episode? Yes. Prove it. I don't recall. Come on, Chris. But we did it. We talked about it. talked about as. Uh, and we, of course, we mentioned Cthulhu. Uh, we also talked about Dagon in that one. Those were the most memorable ones. Welcome to World of Monsters. Ones. We need another one to have the more memorable ones. is <laughs> <laughs> you are Arthur. You are not being. Yeah. We got the most votes. Ferenc we did. John Guys, it was number forty-eight. Lovecraftian monsters. Haha. <laughs> So for you fans out there, <laughs> good job, Jono. Go watch Monster Cast 48. Can we can do another one. Now? We can do another one. See, thank you. You may go to sleep. Please show up next week, see, please, just for me. Please do it. I'll need your moral support. <laughs> what is it, Jam? John? How do you investigate this? Arthur already explained yes, it. Yes, but how do you spell it? I can't spell it. it. <laughs> it's an John it. Ho you see, Jono is spelling it in the chat. Louis says what part two. Him? Next time, Louis, um, just keep it up, Lovecraftian, but we'll 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 settle this uh, deboggle, whatever. Oh, okay, I was in the wrong chat. That explains everything. <laughs> nice. Uh, images? I have no clue. And this Pro, if you don't complain about this, I don't want to hear you complain about another monster cast ever here, especially as a monster 
uh, an undertaker. <laughs> so we have done it. So for you guys that are new, do check out our Lovecrafting episode. Um, please do. You'll get to know the channel even more and what, and us and who we talk about and what we talk about. I mean, uh, now it's going to be who we talk about, damn it. The next monster cast is going to be a joke. It's going to be freestyle. Take it as that. Um, and then after that, we'll vote for the next one. So enjoy. Do check out our Lovecrafting one and think if we do need a next one, we can definitely do a part two. So next time we're going to be talking about John Hamm, whatever the hell that is, monsters, monster cast 66. I, I hope John Hamm doesn't sue us because YouTube's got this thing that when you bully someone or troll someone in the video now, they can shut that video down. And <laughs> and apparently John Hamm is really sensitive. That's why John likes to make fun of him even more though he loves him. So it's possible no more monster cast because of John Hamm. Okay? Everyone oh, understand? Yeah. We should have taken Lovecraft. That's going to be awesome <laughs> if John Hamm ever gets on YouTube and sees, wait a minute, what is this monster cast? My name? <laughs> he's such a small star but there's a whole freaking two hour talk about him uh, I'm done I'm done thank you everybody for participating making my Saturdays better making my life better honestly um, this uh, community uh, having you guys around be it through good times and bad I appreciate you all very much more than uh, uh I don't know if more than you know. I think you guys know that I appreciate you a lot because uh, I'm here. And we appreciate you a lot, Arthur. Without you, our merry band of weirdos would never have gotten together. We wouldn't know That's each true. other. And we th uh, have only you to thank for. You are our Arthur. And we have oh. our round Discord. That is awesome. Our round Discord that we sit at. Yeah, over a year we've been doing this. These voice things and uh i've never done anything that long uh, the longest and i've been about your guys age i know we have a lot of younger 20 year olds here that's the last time i really got involved with online communities when i was younger and i think the longest was maybe a year if even never this long and i don't know it doesn't feel like this is slowing down i'm enjoying it um really cool so 2020 should be fun thank you everybody Stay tuned for our next uh, fun monster cast. I don't know what I'm going to name it because if John, if John Hyam finds it, we might get in trouble. But it might make everything even more worth it. Ooh, what if it scales up and they delete my whole channel? Well then, Jono, you know I'll be after you. <laughs> don't worry, I'm good at bullshitting people. <clears throat> this conversation is a perfect example. I'll just, don't worry. Thank you. If crafty monsters, John Ham monsters, man could have done parasite monster factions. Okay, I'm out. Bye, guys. <laughs> Sorry, Louis. Mm -hmm. Poor guy. And John D said, "Yep, just wanted to say penis." I believe Joe is illithid Sid. Everybody. So for you guys that aren't sure here, I think that's illithid Sid because I only know that Sid says penis. And now I saw uh, Inca saying, "I need to end this." Goodbye, everybody. Until next Saturday. Have a wonderful week, day, night wherever you are. Go ahead and say your goodbyes. Thank you for being here. John Odeo, Elithid Sid, Chris, Pro, C, everybody else that's dropped off. You guys over on, <laughs> there he is, Lady Nerds. So Inca was, aw. Uh, you guys on YouTube, Louie, Rita, all of you, thank you. Go ahead and say your byes. Till next time. Yeah. Thanks, C, for staying out. Oh, all right, there we go. Thank you, C, for staying out the whole time. I like Nick. <laughs> Thank you, C. Nick was so nice. You should like Nick. No, we're out, shelves. We just finished. <laughs> you just caught the ending. Shelves, I would have loved to hear your thoughts on today's topic. Maybe next time.
Rhino want monsters. You're a pretty creative creator of monsters. Would have been fun. And three, two, one. 